make that money machine break. I'll be wrong. Right on cue live. We are live. Happy almost New Year. By the time you're hearing this, it will be New Year's Eve. I'm feeling great. Turn me up, plug. Championships. Yeah. <laughs> Champions of the United States. And uh, we got two special, special guests. Oh, no. Look at fucking intern. As Just getting here now. Start. You're a liar. That's okay. We got two special guests here today. Uh, fan favorites, to say the least. You already know. Oh, uh, relax. R relax. Relax. I was trying to take over. Shout out to Lena. <laughs> but back, uh, at, like last, yeah, both of them kind of basically been like a year. Actually, last time Tyreek was here, Tyreek, pay attention to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, you already fucking know. Mm -hmm. I guess. Like, you already know. Penny, last I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Paris, guys, if you didn't know who I was. <laughs> For those, the few. But Penny, Penny going pen infamous episode last time she was here. She's back. And Tyreek, last time he was here, was literally a year ago on the Toxic Intermission Man. last Damn. year recap episode. Which I actually personally like. You know, Tyreek tried to ambush me with the tweets. That was my favorite part. You can do it again if you want. <laughs> Wait, what was that episode about? When just it was him, Max, Mike, and Key, we were just recapping shit, going through a bunch of topics. I remember that's when we talked about the, the tweet. That, the tweet that was, was really fresh in my mind. Like the whole, like, who career would you rather have, Nikki's or... The Nikki thing, yeah, yeah Nikki like and Nas, that happened. Yeah. Anyway, though, but, anyway, <laughs> like I said, it's technically New Year's Eve, and tonight is the party I'm looking forward to all year. I'm excited. So I wanted to talk real quick, like, before we get into this, like, full recap of the year. Shout out to the champagne on deck and the crown on deck. That one. I'm the only one that's going to be drinking, but, you know, whatever. Thank you, Tyree. Tyree definitely held you down. Fuck out of here, Penny. But, um, so, I was, had, I was very grateful moving to my place this year. Been a lot of good memories. A lot of them sharing with y'all. And let's talk about the aphrodisiac. Oh, we bring it mad up. <laughs> The aphrodisiac pad and the vibe. Baby, real quick. That right? house might have been built on like some old Indian mm -hmm. light barrel. Like, I mean, for real. No, that's what I was thinking. Because it, it's really just the, the like a hole like... on the roof. <laughs> yeah. The roof. Because it was just like. I With the powder like, on the roof. Some powder right? on the roof. Some memories on the roof. I don't you know? know. Maybe like where you lived used to be a whorehouse or something. I take that. I like that rep. Because it's like. That's kind of tough. It's just very, it's like, just a lot very of sexual energy in there. Sexual, mm -hmm. sexy. I like that. Yeah. So, like, y'all trying to have a good time tonight? Yeah, I think we're going to have fun. Yeah, like, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be yeah. nice, to say the least. I'm sure. Super nice. Yeah, you know champagne sneak up on you, so. I mean, no, I don't know that. But let's take a shot real quick, talk about it. Okay. All that being said, uh, is this the one thing? Right. Then back to this shot. Oh, the this is the first one. Last shot. It's I'll the, do. All right, take it. Yeah. Thank you, Tari. And thanks for the champagne. But um, you tasting the crown with the champagne. He is so fucking ghetto. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> champagne and Red Bull. Shout to Rihanna. This is the most ghetto shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's so actually some ghetto. next level shit right there. Thank you, Tyree. Thank he's you. Ghetto. Um, what's your chasing? How did the picture turn out? This this one decent. I don't like the one with me. Oh, it's fine. Like I said, it was fire. It's like far. You should have got a little closer though. Mm -hmm. Um, millennial entitlement. It's something me and Penny talk about plenty of times, whatever. So I feel like a lot of times, you know, we like in a real creative generation, creative time. Everybody want to be doing something. Everybody want to be fake busy. Everybody want to be, you know, look like they doing something, whatever. And I feel what comes with that is the entitlement of like being like recognized immediately and like having all this respect without like the credits and all that shit that comes with it. What do y'all guys thoughts on that? It runs rampant on like social media with people always bitching about like why I'm not why I don't got this why people don't see yeah I think at the end of the day like it really all boils down to just working hard until people want to fuck with you like that's always been my bottom line like it's not about like when you're the seller it's your job to sell to the audience mm -hmm. or sell to the person that you're pushing product to. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do the convincing. They, they're your your customer. Don't Can't do the convincing. Convince, like, like, yeah, like they they get sold to. They don't do the selling. You do the selling. So it's like you know I don't know how these various brands or whatever you want to call them like how they expect to be, you know, mentioned in these different. I guess brands who earn their notoriety without mm. putting in the work until people want to fuck with you until it's undeniable. I feel like a lot of people have this like expectation of like 
oh, I'm just going to do this thing or start this company or become an artist or whatever the case may be. And like, because I think I'm good, my grandma think I'm good, then like everybody <laughs> else should, yeah, then they kind of get jealous of people that I'll may have, grandma. right, that may have that, what we call, what well, they like to call overnight did. success. And then they compare themselves to that, not realizing that the majority of people that are successful have been working at their craft for years. But, like, but we look at these like, one offs overnight that they want to get jealous or expect the same thing. And mm-hmm. I think that's kind of. And I think it's because of social media too. Like, yeah, social media. Like everything I thought Instagram specifically. Like yeah, it plays a huge is, part in it. Not even just Instagram because Twitter has its ways too. Like I think Twitter is Twitter is a social network that contributes to people not even wanting to share their opinion about mm-hmm. things, their honest opinion about things. Because you know you get people. Trying to call you some kind of phobic. Or call your job. If you don't, yeah. Get or call where you were, <laughs> being fired. Job. Like, you know, just for having a difference in opinion that may not be racist or sexist or homophobic. Now it's all about interpretation and hype. Yeah. And that's like, all it takes is for one person to retweet a, t- a tweet with their opinion or their interpretation of what you said. And then thousands of people going to retweet that. Yep. And then it's just so Twitter has its ways too. Mm-hmm. It's not just Instagram. I think both of them fuck with yeah, our it's, psyche. It's all of it. It's like you have to also think that like a lot of people that were successful prior to the social media era were like a lot of them were like working their asses off to get noticed. And social media had what they had to leave the house. Yeah, leave the house. And nowadays, like people are literally behind their devices creating facades and images that like are immediately transferred to like viewers, thousands, millions of people. So it's like, I think that it's the expectation based on the time too. Like if obviously like people that were successful before, you can't, like I hate that they try to compare themselves to them because it's like they don't even have the same work ethic as those people. Mm -hmm. Like those people are getting outside, like walking around like street marketing themselves, flyers, like all kind of stuff. Yeah. Like remember party flyers back in the day? Like you used yeah. to hand you flyers and go to a party. Yeah, everywhere. Mail everything like you'll repost this for me. Like everything is digital. That also like contributes to entitlement too. Yeah. Because people think that because it's so easy for you to repost something that you're supposed or to, to do it. Because how, people how even how have access it? to you to post something. I didn't even know that you could send voice memos on Instagram now. Yeah, I just know that. Like, as if it was a text message. So, because people had this much access to you, they feel like, hey, since we're cool on Instagram and Twitter, let me hit her up and expect her to repost this and to tweet this. And it's just like, no, that's not how it works. Like, treat me like a normal customer. I want to believe in it so that I can be a long term customer. So I can actually believe in it. Like, right. that's the whole like, point. Like, I don't <laughs> want to support you simply because, like, oh, like, I know you, so I'm going to support you. Like, no, no. that's bullshit. I wanna that's, actually, yeah, I want to actually enjoy the product. So I can invest. Yeah, like, yeah, that's bullshit. Like, I feel overall people just, um, they don't embrace the process. I'm not sure if everybody did back then before this era, but of course we don't have the evidence of it. I feel people, like, it, like you said earlier, people get so caught up in a one-off. I feel even people that see someone who's been putting in a lot of time, but they didn't see it. They didn't see so it. So they still just get caught up. Oh, they doing it. They, this is where the, they are right now. Like, why I can't get there? Like, the person I like to use people, people like, try to take see, a year to get to Diddy's money. Like, when people oh, see, like, like, utilize, like, NBA players and, they and NFL kill players. they want to kill themselves when it don't happen. <laughs> and they, like, ridiculous. somebody getting signed right to college. Like, getting signed to the NBA or NFL right to college. And, like, oh, well, like, that's quick money. It was overnight. And it's just, like... Most of these guys have been playing bad the whole life. Because they were like kids. kids. Right. And it's like you're and when you add like, like six. when you add the age of six to twenty one, that's a long fucking time, like perfecting you a craft. Get into a million dollars. That's the you point that I'm trying to get it. Yeah, I, I I need it. I spent my entire life. Went through crafting, injuries. Oh, yeah, yeah, injuries, like crafting a skill, like refraining from doing certain things that other people were able to do because they were trying to work on their craft or get into a certain school mm-hmm. or be scouted by certain people. Like it's just a matter of like sacrifice, hours of training, hours of training that people Practice, don't see. Commitment. And that's another thing that social media plays a part in. Like most people don't yeah. post their struggle. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, like, yo, like say, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna you're gonna see the highlight, you're gonna see the great part of it. You're gonna see like you're gonna see me traveling, see me dressing good, see me at parties, like but you're not gonna see all the so bullshit right behind yeah. Especially right. with all the extra <laughs> shit that's been going on on social media with it becoming more about brands and mm-hmm. business than like Because everybody's a brand now. Like even personalities public are being figures. sold. Right. Right, as public figures. They're you know they, they're selling their personality, they're selling their looks, and what happens is they never really offer any real value or no, product. Right. A real product. They're the product, and they're a bad product a lot of the times. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, 
and then they get they they say something bad or do something bad. Then it's like this weird ass apology that goes out. Yeah, it's just it's like, like apologies. Uh, and I just be looking at him, I'm like, who the hell are you to begin with? You know what I mean? Like, for like, real. like I just. And as far as the apologies, it's like, yo, if I ever get famous, like, I just want you to know that you have two options. You can shoot my ass out, or you can eat a dick up. Because I'm not apologizing for anything. I'm not apologizing for no tweets that I said 10 years ago. I was going to say, who was the guy that apologized for something he said he was like 13? Brother Nature. Yeah, like, that's weird. For nothing that I said a year ago. And I that's what he was like thirteen. They like what you're racist. Been, I was like y'all are drugs. That's one that's been really entertaining for me, just on like my little journey of like people thinking I care, <laughs> like they care. <laughs> <know> about, <laughs> I was here like you. We know you don't get here <laughs> about like certain shit has happened with the podcast. Like, I remember the Afro Latina thing. You know what's the thing? People were like oh my god, and like yeah. yeah but see, even what, the, the fake out the thing? outrage, the fake. It, all it takes is one person. Mm. Or two people to be and offended. Were, and it was just funny, but they were like truly bothered. And yeah. they were like, but why aren't you bothered that we bothered? It was like, no, like, I'm black. Like, so it's like, I don't really have nothing to be bothered yeah. about. Like, I like, it's pretty common. I mean, that's a new wave too, though. though. Like, and I feel like they have to accept that this whole, like, you know, Hispanics that it's come from ex- it's, it's new to us. And it's new to them. It's new to us. And you it's know what new was, to them too, though. You know what I was thinking about? Yes. I was thinking about this shit like two days ago. Like, for me, growing up, being born, black in america like black to me is more than just african oh yeah blood and african lineage it is heritage. black is a culture black is mm-hmm. a culture like mm-hmm. and and when i think black i don't think african i think black american, american yes. and that's like, why i try to explain it to and, somebody and that's before. why that's why for us it's kind of i hear someone now, else say it it's like huh now like, i'm more accepting right, of, of, of the afro latina you know I'm understanding it a lot more, but mm-hmm. that's why it was hard for me to connect it because I feel like even beyond them, it's very trendy to be black now. Yeah. And you know, growing up, Shout having out to the nigger fishing that I, I learned is a thing on Twitter. You know, well. having uh, growing up with Puerto Rican friends. <laughs> they were different. Growing up with Puerto they Rican black friends, friends we who were, Shout you know, who were who were Puerto Rican, they never was black like they, they never, never they and were it was okay like, yes. and it was cool because yeah. i'm black and you put and we both recognize like, the struggle but we knew you wasn't black yeah like it's yeah. kind of like in in your head you low-key thought she was better than me because your hair was longer but i i knew i was cooler than you mm-hmm. so it's like you wear pajamas i was trying to tell people all yeah the time so that, like, it's even with fashion music yeah, all that it's shit like, like it's it was it's always been a psychological thing so you know, when you have people like start talking about, oh, well, I'm black because I, I have African blood and my heritage is just like, no. You're just, of African descent. Just understand that from my perspective, being black, fine. being black is more than just having black blood. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a culture, black American culture. I was going to say it's a culture because anytime that you can. Anytime that you can separate yourself from the black culture and claim another culture, then you're not black. So you can't say like, "Oh, I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm, I'm Afro Latino," and then say, "Oh, I'm but I'm black." Mm-hmm. When well, no. we can only say, I can black. only say yeah. I'm black. You can you can at some point you can you can su- cut a sever and you can only accept the Latino culture or boast about the Latino culture or even bask in it because somebody thinks you're exotic, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And I only can claim being black. I and and we so can acknowledge black. that. I feel that's what they were. I feel I noticed that in that whole debacle, yeah. they wasn't. They weren't willing to acknowledge. Acknowledge that, well. that it's a separation. I don't, I don't and think it wasn't that they weren't willing to acknowledge it. I just don't. I think anytime you're going back and forth with somebody on Twitter, you can never really articulate Lee, what you really your want. point because it, it takes. You went to two hundred and forty characters. So I think you know if. You know Stephanie's gonna hear this. Shout out to her. Shout out to Shout Mike. Out right. Like they're Love all gonna hear this. So that I, nigga I think Mike. that I think that they're. I don't think they're gonna be offended by anything that we say. Like I hope not. Yeah, because I, I get I get the whole like African culture. I just, I just want culture. I just. But want, I feel like that is a separate culture than black culture. I just, but it's like at the same time I, I get, am more I get that you you know, but the again, whole Afro power. But there's two. Still, there's what I, what I also learned just overall is that. There's different interpretations of what black yeah, is, and it is. what I yeah. us saying is black is different than what I feel real other people saying black. And that's, and that's what's cool. and that's what's interesting because all of us in this room, well, not this room, but all of us in the interview, <laughs> Child, <the> top of <laughs> we're all black Americans, uh, taught by black American parents, uh, raised by black American grandparents, uh, and black American great grandparents, and grew up in black America, and mm-hmm. grew up in Philly. So it's like we didn't, we weren't dipping and dabbing in salsa music. Like mm-hmm. we ate soul food. Mm-hmm, like this right. is what we grew up on: soul food, Chinese food, all that shit. But it even so, comes down to like Caribbean, so it's, it's like different. Jamaicans, Trinidadians, like you know, 
people from Barbados it's a little different. Asian. It's different. Yeah. You're not actually like Black American. I had a Haitian a girl culture. tell me. Uh, we had a whole debate Asians. the other day. She was like, yeah, she was, she was. It's funny how you know the the prejudice be leaping out and they don't be noticing it. She was saying some shit about her brother having a baby mom, whatever. And who's who's a black American or whatever. And she's saying, yeah, like she got real loud and was yelling at him and da, da, da. You know how black girls do whatever and da, da, da. And I was like, what you mean? Like how right. black girls do. They and you know black girls always Asians. be, duh. I'm like, you're saying only black girls do that? Like, and only and every black girl acts like this? She's like, yeah, because a Haitian one never. I'm like, right. oh, no, a Haitian. Like, so only black women are just loud and just ridiculous and get on act fucking ridiculous in public. But a Haitian girl And what's never sad right. is that like, people outside that. of our race and outside of our black American culture tend to run parallel. But you black, though. They tend to run parallel being black and being ghetto. And those are not yeah. two parallel things. Like, right. they're not the same thing. And that's the Anybody problem. Anybody can that's be the ghetto. Because right. think black when they hear the word ghetto. Right, and it's not the same thing. It's yeah. two completely different things. Because it's some people in this world... That are white, hey, those that are, are Cuban, Shout that, that are Hispanic, that can never sit at the same table as my mother, my grandmother, right. because you are ghetto. Right. So it's like it's not the same thing. And you want to know what else I like? I drew a parallel between you know how Africans feel because recently I've seen on social media that Africans or American kids who were raised by African parents they had this kind of That's resentment. They had this kind of resentment towards Black Americans now because all of a sudden, since Wakanda, everybody wants cool. to, or Black it's, Panther, it's cool, everybody yeah. wants to figure out where they're from. Mm-hmm. That's and, a scam with the twenty one. And, <laughs> and you know, like I'll see tweets Child about, oh, right. I'll see shit like, oh, well, we got teased in middle school. Now all of a sudden, African booty wanna, scratcher. Now y'all want to know where y'all from, and y'all y'all want to be wearing dashikis and this, this, and that. That's how I feel like with the the Afro, like certain aspects of the right. Afro Latina shit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like. Yeah, like you know, I, I understand that. Now point y'all play. Because at first it was offensive <laughs> to now me. Now y'all want to be going back to Africa and shit like that. Now you want to be talking about your melanin. Yeah, because because at first oh you are Ghana. Right. Oh, you're from Ghana? Oh, at right. first it it was offensive to me. Like well, just because y'all got to like y'all need to let that fucking hurt go. That's how I felt. Mm-hmm. Like, but then once I realized that it was the same way I felt about you know all of a sudden. Bitches that I grew up with that I knew would have never said in a million years that they was black until hip hop fused fucking uh, Spanish music I like it like that. and Cardi B blew up and now everybody and now like, ghetto the last like, what, like, like ten years in fashion ghetto was like super couture now so now like everybody wants to be like. I want to be black. I want to the be ghetto. The colorful wigs, like, the long nails, the like, braids, like even yeah, down the, to the, the personality, the, the, the I want to be honest. I want to yeah. be the ultra honest. I'm good bitch. off all of it. You know, it's like everything is a trend nowadays. So it's like I don't know. Like that's. That, it was just interesting how I thought about those two were similar, and it kind of made me understand, like you know, Africans and kids, American kids who were raised by African parents, their point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on, earlier like so we, we we touched on the whole millennial entitlement thing, like yo, like just because I follow you or whatever, that mean um, I'm supposed to do this or support you in a certain ways. I bet you had access to me. Right, have access. I, I might not even write back. So you know, shout out to the Funky Forever list. This year has been interesting. I feel it's been like a different like juncture with that. I feel like I hit a pace where I was cool. Nobody really was like doing no like dickhead shit, whatever. You got soft, man. Oh, you got soft. Oh, you mature. Like mature. No, got soft. soft. How I get soft, Penny? You think you got soft? Like nobody. People have been doing fucked up shit to Q all fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the bottom line. Like. <laughs> What? People been fucking. I think I hit a co- a coast and face shit, year, and, and like, this shit well, is way left. It's not that deep. Like I mean, maybe not that deep. Grown. Like you know, like sometimes but you have to grow up and still like and not know. find stuff. Valuable Outside of Vic, we went to the event. What are some other instances that you remember? Of uh, people playing with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to start with the most recent. Or like go is that? Comedian, shot. <clears throat> we take a shot. Just go, Tari. I like it. Um. Oh this yeah. Like a little real. The comedians, uh-huh. like, I don't even remember their names, but the comedians that came on the show and they like busted up with you. The girl that said she was a ten. With a personality. I don't think she said that. What girl? She I said think- her personality make her a ten. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I thought she. I thought she said she was a ten because of her personality. That's a different scale, though. Ain't that the same? Mm-mm. No. Your person like making you a 10 or no. you a 10 because so, okay, you're a person Okay, so the bottom line was that she just wasn't. That's fair. That's fair. That's valid. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> same thing. you know, they came on the show and they was just busting right, it up and shit and 
talk about it. You go on their Instagram, nobody posts shit. Mm-hmm. Nobody tweets shit. Yeah. Nobody says Oh, that girl. Shit. Right. Uh, Drizz and um, Funny Boy Quill. So that's what I realized. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it was a while where I felt like none of these things And I just hard. thought it was insane. Like, and you know, when he was on the show, when he was talking about how Kwa DM'd him about posting the video and... Then you know Kwai had already blew up. Mm-hmm. Would it be he safe to call these to people him. like clown chasers? Yeah. I don't know. Why would you say clown chasers? Because people that are, I mean, the, the way that I mean, well, the way that I categorize it is somebody that like you're opportunist, like you're gonna take opportunities, but you only kind of like give the same energy if it's gonna really be like beneficial to you mm. and not necessarily but because you're case, genuine. Don't waste your time. Right. That's what I but that's what I'm saying. Just don't waste your time. Saying. But that's what I've learned in these different little instances. If you're so with, busy and you're so right. big and That's what I'm saying. Like, so if it's not genuine, don't do it. And that's your how schedule I feel. is just so booked and you're just so... Everybody same is with, knocking at your door right, to right, get your no. autograph. <laughs> yeah. You know, with, you don't have time to waste. The same with, you know, shout out to Bino. I fuck with Bino, but I felt he it was the same energy with him with forever. Like not fully fuck you forever, cause you know he did he did the bare minimum to still be cool with whatever. But like he wasn't. He just but he but retweeted all your tweets. No, he retweeted like two or some some of that, which is fine. Like all right, you did you did the main you did the initial Q news. You did the initial join. He tweeted two. He did the initial post. He did the initial post and he retweeted like comments like from Tyree. So I was like, all right, that's cool. But what's interesting to me was on Instagram, he like. Didn't post nothing on Instagram or whatever, but it was like another podcast from New York that like mentioned him on the air or whatever, and he screen recorded the whole like little yeah, excerpt like, on there mm-hmm. and will post that, but won't post a podcast in Philly that you were actually on or whatever because that podcast made you be bigger and more notable. And I thought that was maybe what you just mentioned. Like, yeah. it isn't that beneficial for me. Why even go my way to post it on my gram? But why? Like, I thought that's why you waste your time. That's what I'm getting. But I realized that also people. They'll they take probably, any opportunity. It's political. You know like, not that, not people not that busy. It's chestnut checkers, so that yeah, way, if I, you do ever blow up, these people can say, oh, well, I did do your I show. Was I was there. I was there. I was there. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take some attention the right, from you, but I don't want to give you yeah, none. It like, gives them the right access to your fan base and your audience. That's what I mean by And that's what's crazy, because they'd be the first ones, like Philly support Philly. People attach themselves to other people in order to gain more. You know what I mean? Like That's what I mean by clout chasing. It doesn't mean necessarily that you... Are doing something like deliberately to be like mean or non supportive, but like people will attach themselves to gain more mm-hmm. and not because it's a genuine attachment, not because, like, oh, like I really like fuck with this person or what it case may be. Like, I'm gonna do it because it's giving me access to them, their you know, fan base, their audience, whatever. You so know, like, what I mean? again, I just feel like don't even waste your time. Yeah, like, I mean, there's ways to be political, but then I feel like there's also ways to like not come off as a cloud chaser. And I thought uh, y'all takes on the, on the We Are Live event were interesting as well. Saying that people who've been on the show, people on the scene, people who show support in whatever ways, but then show up. <laughs> but then show up. The <laughs> Spicy. But then show up. So, me personally, I don't, I can't, I didn't feel the need or even felt it was sensible or fair to take offense to people I don't consider friends not show up to an event like that with them. Cause you know my friend, you like an acquaintance or I mean not a quote unquote industry type. I wouldn't thing. expect you to take offense to it or take it. But the reason personal. why, but I do think that it's something that should like open your eyes. Of course, everything. And should. you know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, like you should be offended because X, Y, and Z didn't show up. No, that's a waste of your time and energy. Mental notes are always yeah, but definitely take mental notes like who's really like supportive of you mm-hmm. and who's just there to attach themselves to gain from your audience. That, and that's why it's like, for me, you should, like, those are the, the things and the signs and the people that you should keep yeah. an eye out for. Because there were a lot of people that was, like, retweeting it and doing all this extra shit it didn't show up. on Twitter and everything, but didn't really show up. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of people who were at the first free event that didn't show up to this $10 event. Just going there. So, like, you know, once you well, start... tight. Once you start... Um, <laughs> Like, you know, seeing shit like that, I do, I definitely think that it's important yeah. to take mental note, especially, and you know me, like, I was just like, none of the motherfuckers would have ever been Right, you was like, it should be a new fucking forever list. Like, 
nobody that I ever brought on the show, like, you know, on some genuinely building up Philly, like Philly support Philly right. shit. Mm -hmm. Does some people really nobody, mean that? Some people nobody that been on the show that didn't come to my event would ever be on my I show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, for one. Because I kind of feel like I'm going to support you, you from show. Philly if I really support you. If I like Not it. just because you're from Philly. Right. Definitely. I will support you if I fuck with it. If you're from Philly, that's yeah. really what's up. Like, yeah, you know? like if you're from Philly, I might go even harder. Mm -hmm. Like, but if you're not, then but it's you fine specifically like because your guests have been Philly guests. Yeah. So, like, they push the narrative. Right. Philly support Philly. Okay. Yeah. And like, like your girl Tyree. Your your biggest, your biggest. Tierra. No. <laughs> I love Tierra. Way. Wack high. Why do you not like Tierra? Or you just don't like the I project? don't dislike Tierra. You dislike the project. I hate clarification. You so hate it? <laughs> you also hate Tyler the Creator, though, so. He never said he hated him. He just said it wasn't his. Yeah, hate is wrong. I mean, like, but. It's two different but I days. thought it was with Tier Wack. I didn't know you hated the project. What would you say? What was the difference between not liking at all and hating? To hate, and to hate something, something means you made up in your mind that you don't like that you it. Don't like to be indifferent about it. No, not indifferent, but just it's not liking and hating the same thing? No, no, because say, I, right? I feel like not liking hating it. Hating means that you have a strong distaste for it. Yeah, like okay. like not liking it just means it's like I could care less you about You know, it. like I could care okay. less or it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. Like, it's it's not bad, but it's not a song that I necessarily like. Sometimes that's how I music. Well, you say you music. hate Big Sean music or you just don't like it? I just don't think Big Sean can rap. Okay. Any music you hate? Because of course I was speaking in just like heavy so metal. Heavy metal. That's fair. That is a different. Like that shit. is some weird shit. When it really like hurts your ears, kind of. That's thing. some like, weird shit. That's fair. Yeah. So back to Virginia. Yeah. I I don't like the project. But yeah, she. You know. And I thought it was like. I thought it was interesting. To me, the bigger conversation, well, I, I brought up another episode, but like, just what is Hayden in this day and age of like. Hayden is whatever somebody Hayden, categorizes yeah. it as in, in 2018, moving into 2019. Hayden, Hayden is, is when you know something is great, but you still, for whatever reason, not right. trying to give them props. But isn't everything subjective? But to yeah, an extent, but you can't, I love the gifts. A lot of you hate the gifts, though. But it don't matter whether you like LeBron James or not, or Kobe Bryant, or Michael That's Jordan, right. like, you know. Certain or, things. Or That's not that to an extent is subjective. Or like, Mike Tyson, like, these were great. People. Yeah. These were, Pac and B were great. Hove is great. Like, it's just like, and it, there are certain people, Beyonce is talented and great. Like, there are certain people that it's just like. Even if you don't like their music, a fan of them, them like, you can't deny their greatness. Yeah. Like, and I think that's where the whole confusion came in when you was like, Calling the project trash. Yeah. Air quotation was like, I get you don't like it's it, not but that team. that product is far from trash. Yeah. It's hmm. like you may not like it, but the the product itself is far from trash. Yeah, I've heard trash like the, shit. Yeah. That wasn't trash. Like the project is getting way too much like attention and way too much props from like people that people that are on these like iconic levels. For you to be like, it's trash. Well, I don't like a lot of stuff. That I mean, great. But I for you not to that. like it is fine. <laughs> but but like, I think a lot of shit is trash that get attention, though. Mm. I think Earl Sweatshirt is right, absolute but the, trash. The, the thing is, the project, it wasn't trash. It wasn't. Like, but that's Because even if you didn't like the, the if even if you didn't like her as a lyricist, like just the creativity behind the production of the project. Okay. You had the, and the like, visuals. The visual, like from an artistic standpoint, it's dope. Even if you don't like the actual music. I'm talking about the music. Regardless, you call the well, project I, trash. Well, I said the project. I'm talking about the music I'm talking about But you it. said the project was trash. So not the entire exhibit. I, I, but I, even the fact, about the project, but even about the the fact that it was like one of the songs, they wrote it to each album. other. It was yeah. like a visual album. So that's why when you So the visual it. is a part of the project. It's not separated. Because it was when I think of Lemonade, I know people, I, like, I hear this art right. before, people like, yo, oh, but Lemonade, the whole project, I like Lemonade, the album. I don't care and about that's the fine. But Lemonade like, was a visual album, though. It was but supposed to be I can judge things with the, with the video recording. Even with the audio, like, if you were just judging the audio, it's just like, those are not poorly produced songs. Those are not bad songs. But if I don't like, like it at all. Like then I don't like it at all. But, but you, trash you not like something, is a but different level. Trash is different. So it was like, like, trash, and hate. No, it, hate come before trash. I feel like no, trash I, is like I don't have a fucking opinion. Like that I don't know, is I feel garbage. Like hate, <laughs> hate trash. I feel I like, feel like hate like comes before trash. Trash got you before hate. 
Yeah, really? like you go yeah. out of your way to hate. Like yeah. you could just casually think something is trash, but you go out of your way to say, okay. "I hate this shit." I can see that. <laughs> stop, talking. like dog, big you and stop fucking rapping. Right, relax, like, relax, like, relax. Hate this shit. Set like, the mic. Relax. Like, yo, stop rapping, nigga. Like, please. Um, what? Uh, another thing we talked about before. What is being shallow, Tyreek? It's time we be being shallow. Yeah, cause you be calling it shallow sometimes, and I just be like, I don't know. When he's shallow, right? When I'm shallow is different than when everybody else is shallow. Oh, it's a little different. It's still shallow. It's still shallow though. Okay, but being shallow is more so like. Cause people call me shallow, so I feel like it's just the surface stuff. I feel like you take everything for face value instead of. <laughs> actually like getting into things and that's what anything whether it's a person art music movies like it's just like i'm gonna take it for what i that snap moment of it and just judge it versus like actually being able to understand it you know what i mean it's like people like when you're wine tasting and they tell you to, and they tell you to like smell it first swirl it look at the alcohol level look at the leaks on the glass like switching the amount get the flavor for it understand where it comes from understand the, the composition of it and so I'm just like, oh, that's that's nasty wine. Like, is it really nasty wine? Or was it curated to taste the way that you actually taste it? Like, for example, some wine is made with, like, smoked wood. So it's like, if you just chug it, it's like, oh, that's nasty. It tastes like wood. But it's like, it's supposed to taste like wood. So what it's, what it's created for, did it hit those levels? And I feel like shallow is when we take things for face value. Like, it's a quick judgment. It's not an actual, like, detailed judgment. But everything is always quick judgment. Like if you saw a bum on the street and he and tried shallow. to talk to yeah. you, like, but it's still you know, shallow. You wouldn't be like, let me get this man a chance. Maybe he just had. That's right. my big experience. But everyone is shallow like, though. But everyone is shallow to an extent. Like, I think that, we have shallow. Yeah. 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 I think everybody's prejudiced and everybody's shallow. Absolutely, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. We're human beings. They're defense mechanisms. We have to weed out safety, like safety, like safe, yeah. safe situations, safe people. That's investments. why white women are scared of black people. Yeah, black men it's, specifically. Yeah. What are some of y'all top shallow things that are like reoccurring tendencies? Um, I can go first. I don't know. You go first. I really? have no idea. Uh, teeth. You got like horrible teeth. Like Oh, physically with a person. Okay. I think he's saying in general. Yeah, in general. Uh, that's the first thing I thought of. But yeah, like, like the girl got some like fucked, like really fucked up teeth. It's like, like, like they got covered in mouth. Maybe see somebody with like a... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't talk to a guy with big gums and little teeth. Big gums. They can get that I fixed, that. though. I don't care. They can get that fixed? Like, yeah, they can get them scaled down. Jen, then wow. come talk to me when you get your gums scaled down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you can do for me. You can fix that. And get your teeth bigger. Yeah, they get them scaled down. It's like, wow, that's a crazy recovery. It is. I mean, they do everything now. Oh, you go the age um, of cosmetics. Skin. Like, I can't do ultra bumpy faces. Yeah, same. <laughs> Shout out to Tyreek. Skin, skin I can't do yeah, like extremely like, bad skin. You said you can. I can't do extremely. Oh yeah, skin. like you know people with who really had acne problems, like. Mm-hmm. The, the, can you do it with a meat, uh, meat meat eater? Can you do it with a meat eater? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I mean. She's friends with. Right. I mean. Because I don't eat meat. It's not like for me, I'm not the kind of person that's like not eating meat because like I feel like, oh my God, animals have souls. Because you love like, fur. Talk right. It. So it's like. <laughs> you I, just want to live fuck an animal. Like, <laughs> I just want to look young when I'm 80. But the whole point is like. Fuck those animals. It's like I could, I could date somebody or tell somebody that like eats meat. I mean, I talk to y'all. You motherfuckers had chicken with right. chicken fingers. We will fuck some chicken. Like, like cute menu for the last party was Z. what? Like chicken with chicken Woo. fingers? Mm. With chicken dip, like, it's, it's gonna be the like same thing. Like, <laughs> she was like, "I might have chicken nuggets." Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, remember, was you in a group chat when he said he wanted the chicken finger tray? And yeah, like that's anything. That's anything. Q, what? I would be fucking them up too. I wouldn't allow y'all to have no chicken finger tray. Because wedding food be horrible. Right. Yes. Wedding and ain't gonna be no wedding cake when we sweet potato. Because usually, if you know, at venues they have their own catering. Usually mm. when people book venues. They don't like you can work it into your contract. I only been to one wedding. But like, a lot of people don't negotiate. A lot of people say sad. this is what we have. <laughs> like, you know, that's very sad. Say. You wait all the time to get married, do this dumb ass spread. Well, right. all the weddings that I I wish I would get married, the food is trash. <laughs> that was like a traditional wedding. Like, and I feel aunt, like for me it's like it My aunt, she had a reception at like a center. So like okay. of course everybody like cooked food. food and stuff like that. But people who had their reception where their wedding was 
they already had their own they kids. They do. They and have the kids like that. Yeah. Yeah. One one I went to this past year. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's why a lot of people, that's why caterers are also like a big selling point. I mean, this is like off topic, but like a lot of like large restaurants have catering contracts with like venues. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like a huge thing. Like a lot of like, that's like a big like money pocket for a lot of restaurants. Because they have like outside of like the actual in-house catering. Side note, um, one of y'all like, I I think, but one of y'all episode y'all really liked was Pure Purdue. Oh my God, brothers. Oh yeah. oh yeah, it's hilarious. That was like one of my favorite episodes. That I was thought very it was hilarious. hilarious. Shout out to Carl. Shout out to Dreas. And I wanted him. I wanted yeah. Jake Albrecht to go in detail so much since you two were just I mean, so happy I mean, with expressing, you know, your male shit, like having your male ego conversations. He should have been. I got me male ego conversations. He should have been able to brag about all the ass he busted. I didn't say he uh, couldn't. Hilarious. It was just a lot to take in at that moment. It would have been very awkward though. That would have been hilarious. No, like I would have. Because I just it. feel like you and Carl would have been like. Carl was already like, shot. Like, you just yeah, saw Carl be- ain't no shit before that episode. Carl was like, oh, that's why he was at the club in New Orleans. Like, yeah, man. Right. If you, if you ever heard of him, and I respect him, like he, he didn't know. know. And that's respect right there. Because if my brothers ever act like they don't know shit about me, when they said the fucking like, you fucked up. <laughs> like, Child, if you ever heard the episode of my two God brothers and one of them, it was a good episode. It was a very good episode. Towards the end, one of them just, for the first time ever, came out the closet. Ain't no, it was just, no, he, he came out to y'all. He been yeah. out right, there. definitely. He, 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 he was really comfortable. His collar was very wide open. Yeah, he said, When you open that door, <laughs> right, that door, yeah, that, that door, <laughs> that door. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, <laughs> he's a mood. <laughs> that door, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, shout that out to them. Um. I, I, I'm a, I don't know about Dreas because like I, like I don't, I don't think he was as comfortable as Carl. I'm gonna bring Carl right on though eventually. I don't know Dreas. Oh yeah, you gotta ask him. Yeah. That's um, great. Prince versus Michael Jackson. That's not a real I just debate. don't feel like you be <laughs> respecting Prince. Prince's It's genius, not really a debate like, though. Like, because what are we debating? Oh, like, oh <laughs> talk, 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 like I just feel. <laughs> I'm not talking about this. Like, like what? I just, y'all don't get Prince the fuck out of here. Musically, genius he's way wise, more he's than talented. Michael Jackson. Prince Ma- played, played 22, 23. That's cool. What did Michael play? That's cool. What did he play? He didn't even write his own music. He had Quincy Jones. That's cool. Which is cool too. It's fine, but when, 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 when you're comparing like talent, talent. I'm comparing, comparing the like final product. That's what I'm comparing. And that's okay. So we're, fi- compa- we're talking oh, about talent. talent. That's different. How convenient is that? We're not talking, we're not talking about their co- How no, 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 no. Is I mean, no. Beyonce said herself. Oh. Beyonce said herself. What, what queen, sir? She was just like, there are, it's probably somebody somewhere in a basement that's more talented than me. But because we don't have the same exposure, the same beauty standards, they'll never make it. And that's real shit, though. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, it's just like you gotta relax. Like, it's like I kind of yeah, feel I like I kind of feel like people like a total pass. fail to realize like that there are reasons why some people don't blow up as big as others, of and course. it is like it's superficial. That, not only that, but to us again, we're if black Americans. Ugly, she we're right. black Americans. No, not at all. From the from the ghettos and stuff like if that. If she was dark skinned, she wouldn't be Beyonce. All right. See, I never really roll with that. I never really okay, roll with that. But in any case, you know, we grew up we grew up in black American households. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson been like put on us since we were kids. Yeah. Like For it's always reason. been Michael Jackson over No, not even that. For a reason. It's Prince's music don't appeal to black people mm-hmm. how Jackson's five music appealed to black people like growing up. That's why Michael Jackson was in our households from like childhood. I just think because he grew up with our parents. Liked it more. No, he grew Almost, up with our parents. He grew I, up with I know our a lot parents. of old black people Prince that love Prince. Prince. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know yeah, nearly as many black people that love Prince. As Majority of them. Like yes, comparing them Prince's is futile because white. he's Michael Jackson. Right. A lot of Prince's fans are white. They're, they're, they're Granted, a lot of Michael Jackson's fans are white too, but Michael Jackson has more black fans than Prince. But when that you're talking about the two, sure. when you're talking about the two individually, the demographics. When you're talking about the two individually, as far as entertainment goes, I'll take Michael Jackson yeah. over Prince any day. But I heard talent, some people say Prince because he could do all the shit on stage. But talent. But Michael was a perform, like an extreme. He performer. was a performer. Yeah, it's Prince different. was a musician. Like, That's a difference. 
So that's what that's what we say, and I just feel like sometimes because when you, you say write talent it is different, if then you like who had a bigger career, who was more popular, who's more so right now, Michael, who's yeah, greater. That's but that's why because I base it on talent. Know. But if you say greater in regards to talent or greater in regards to I, career, I'm thinking talent and, and that career. Segues me into another discussion. No, 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 but even no, if you... No, it's the same thing, same thing, same even, thing. Even if you rate them the same... Home now, versus Pac. No, listen, even if you How? rate them... Even, <laughs> what? Even, even if you rate them the same, right, with uh, with talent uh-huh. and uh, career, mm-hmm. like, you know, as far as who blew up faster, it's kind of like, for me, it's still Prince because he had that, that musicianship, mm-hmm. like, and he still attained a great level of success. It wasn't as successful as Michael right, Jackson, cool. mm-hmm. but he still attained his own a, level a, of success. A large level of success. Yeah. Like, so, I think people undercut Prince, like, not realizing like, how oh, huge he was, how successful he really was. I just think that a lot of people black people, Prince people an icon. us being black, a lot of you black think people You didn't have been an icon before, though. Never. All right. Never did that. I'm yeah, I, mean, I, I did do Janet that Jackson. I, that happened too in that toxic toxic. I didn't hear that Prince was. Was Janet Jackson being an icon? Yeah, y'all correct me. I was like, she, she, she just Michael Sixter. I know she was a star, but right. y'all, yeah, you're you know, crazy. she's an icon. I mean, maybe. But I, Prince, I, I said I never liked the music, but I know he's an icon. No, he's but fucking, I ain't gonna judge you. The for whole that. world went purple. Like, I ain't gonna judge you for that because I didn't know that about Mariah Carey. I didn't she was know an icon? that she. No, I didn't. Not that she was an icon, but I didn't know that she was as. Oh my gosh. Oh, Mariah is like, people pass out when they I see Mariah. Well, I mean, I'm sure people pass out anytime they see their favorite celebrity. Like, but no, she really elite. And Mariah is like, yeah, see, elite. I didn't know they, they really trying to change now. her legacy, too, because she can't sing no more. Apparently. Exactly. But, so, and yeah. because I'm not oh, really. Can she not sing or does she choose not to sing? I mean, I've seen her sing. Yeah, live. She, her legs. It wasn't there no more. Live yeah, she don't think. She kind of like Whitney. A lot of them don't sing like. A lot of like older singers will lip sync because they reserve their voice. No, but she was really singing though. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. On, when it, when the music cut, she stopped. She wasn't singing. I thought I saw one. Yeah, video. but she still sounded bad. Yeah, I but thought I saw some of her voice wasn't know, good. I didn't know. Like I, I had to learn that it was like, oh my gosh. She got crazy and, records, like, yeah. But you know, back to pocket. Yeah, so one thing I learned, and like this, like recently, the whole music conversation, constantly with the bass, is that it really all just varies, depends on what you hold, what you weigh the most. Yeah. Yeah. So like. Clear, like with the Prince and Michael thing, y'all would put musicianship as like the top priority on the yeah. scale. When you talk about talent, yeah. And, and, Where well, me, I probably put well, the music in the albums. The well, success no, I can't of it. just say it's, no, not success. I can't just say it's yeah. just that. Because like just impact, what Michael's songs are. Impact matters a lot to me. Yeah. Too. Impact is your number one. No. Yeah. Impact's not, not my number one. M- Impact, Impact will be is like number, number one two for me. for me. Okay, so top three. Top three weighted things in judging music and music debates and shit like that. Impact. Um, Mine would be talent, impact, and then sales. Okay. Yeah. Mine. Well, I feel like sales could go with the impact. Not necessarily. I feel like it's a subheading some people, under impact. Some people are like mm. impactful when it comes to fashion, when it comes to socialize. It doesn't mean they're selling albums though. <laughs> Yeah, like in the right, Taylor, still, for example, okay, so unfortunately, the, the question then becomes she doesn't sell as many in, albums. In she's these, very impactful. Like the Wayne didn't is, sell as much as everybody, but he's probably one of the most impactful, influential people. Right, yeah. but the question in these debates become like the goat. Like who is mm-hmm. the goat? This is what I'm talking about. Like when it's, I think that sales can go under impact. It can, but I think you can divide it as well though. Because if somebody, you wanted to, you could put it together. Yeah, because but, somebody can like have a lot of sales. But like their MC impact, Hammer wasn't really yeah. Like, but then like their impact yeah. level when it comes to like certain aspects yeah, of culture, yeah, maybe like mm. or maybe it's just not to us because we don't know. I don't think MC Shaky. Hammer really like really impacted shit. Yeah, but yeah. I thought, past that moment, I kind of thought like Mariah Carey was just Mariah Carey too, just like you thought Janet Jackson was just Mariah like Carey was like the but that's you and your like box. the it girl. Yeah, just like I thought once upon a time pop was just pop. So it's like your box again. Just like I thought, Hove was just. Hove. I think I look at things. I, I, I think I look at things. No, from like but that's my point. That's like, my point. Like you don't know until you know. So maybe it's just a situation. Uh, MC Hammer not that. MC Hammer not that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> he but, did a lot for the West Coast. So you would go impact. Okay, impact. Um, talent. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, he said. Uh, I said talent, impact, okay. and sales. Okay. So reverse so far. What's your third? Impact, talent, and um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know because I feel like this could go in their impact too. Impact, talent. I don't know. I gotta think about. All right. So I'll go catalog number one. 
Right, amount of music or no, quality? No, just music? like quality. Consensus or your personal? Quality consensus, because of course. See, you get. No, no, no. Well, I mean, everything. <laughs> no, I can. I believe like this. Why I to me good. can have the best catalog, but there's no consensus with that, so I'm not gonna put them in any of these discussions. But Hove is like quality and consensus, or like Michael Jackson, quality and consensus. So it, it could be both at times. So whatever. Um, so I would put just catalog in general, hits, albums, classics, all that shit in regards to your catalog. That's number one. And then two, I would put, um, Impact. Damn, Impact 2. Yeah, then, I like, I, I never thought about sales, because sales, you gotta put sales in these type of conversation, so I'll put sales third. But, the only thing with sales, the only reason why that's not really accurate in a debate is because what was... Five million copies in the nineties way way more than a True. stream on your phone today. But I think you just gotta judge it for the time, I suppose. Then. Mm-hmm. Like what Drake is doing now, you but gotta compare it to what you, Michael did back then. How do you measure those kind of conversations when you compare artists who still like somebody that's like, streaming? Well, you can't compare like, Drake how, and Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. To, somebody that's streaming. Uh, yeah, somebody that's streaming. Like how would how would those conversations so, like? Let's like, say somebody streaming like twelve million that? streams versus mm-hmm. somebody that's sold like. Seven million physical copies in the nineties. I kind of feel it's like different. It's, it's, it's way it's different, but I feel like yeah. those, I actually looked it up. Like how many streams are equal to a physical copy? Let me see if I can find it again. I feel someone like Drake. Like he got. I don't even look at his. Every time I see a new tweet, like Drake got two hundred thousand billion. Like okay, cool. I feel but Drake Drake's himself. A, he's got I real like, numbers. I would like Drake. Drake, to Drake say. is a. Drake is a. He's different. He what's what's the word I'm looking for? Damn. He's <laughs> a. Um, Okay, so fifteen hundred song streams is equal to one album sale. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Okay. So like, if if we, I thought they it's get like or these somewhere days. around they that. Do. Somewhere that is cheating. So I feel like Drake. You can say Drake is more like is more respectable kind of, but at the same time, not really. But back then also, they had to go to the stores. I feel like it's kind of the same. And they also had to have the money to purchase multiple albums versus True. like yeah. now I'm paying nine dollars a month. I can stream whoever album I want to stream. Exactly. As much access changes a lot but too. They got to do it fifteen hundred times for it to count as one. Right. So but that's not like, hard. Huh? Not in today's age. Everybody not doing Drake numbers. No, they're not. But I'm saying it's not so hard. It's still, it's still with feet. Streams. It's still with feet. In okay, so though. hypothetically speaking, like if one stream was equal to one album sale, if if fifteen hundred streams was equal to one album sale, mm-hmm. based off of like you know Pac selling two point five million or five million because it was a double disc and it counted as you would have to divide it. By that the that would be like three point seven billion streams. Yeah. Like, so when you think about it like that, it's like it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not fair to compare artists. From I think this if, era to the I think if we had the same access, of course, we will never know this. What if? But I feel yeah. <laughs> you always doing what it. What if? <laughs> but with the internet, I feel music also isn't as valued as it once was. So I feel like because like, it moves so fast. Yeah, with streaming, yeah. with illegal downloads, that whole two thousand era changed everything. But I feel just the the grasp of culture Drake has on the world right now. I feel if it's the same like accessibility technology today. I think no. to say the least, he's doing the same as two pot numbers. Like, like, no, but I think the, so. the argument is because we have more access now, it would be easier for artists to to get to, those numbers. Yeah, to get those numbers it's than easier. it would be in the nineties. And the only reason why I brought up the number, like the three point seven billion, was just mm-hmm. to put things in perspective. It don't mean that he like, wouldn't be like selling like out. He it was just selling was, yeah. what's equivalent to like our time now. He was selling three point seven. That would be three point seven billion like, streams. Like physical copies. That's, like, if, that's if, crazy if a headline about Drake came out tomorrow that said one album sold or streamed three point seven billion times, that would be insane to people. So that's why I mentioned that. Just to, you know, like put things in perspective. But I think it, it was harder back in the day. That's why those sales are heavier than what a stream is. It was more work. Yeah. Because like you said, you could pay nine ninety nine and stream everybody's Body's music. Out. Right. <laughs> like it's not like you I can stream a hundred songs in one day versus like back in I would have to actually go and buy physically albums. buy all those albums. I do that. I'm not doing it. Didn't even know if the album was gonna be fire or not. Just I, like spending my money. I actually money. do that, stream buy albums. No, oh, you should, 100. Right. But it's like, would you go to buy 100 albums? Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> the times are different. It's hard to compare when the times are different. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like one album is like equivalent to what we pay in the streaming service. It's like albums was like $15 back in the day. $24 back in the day. So it's like, if it was a double disc. So it's like, you know, for people to be spending this money, 
I mean, granted, inflation. That's all they had to do, though, as well. Though. They had no other means. But that's like we but have a lot the internet. People, but people don't even want to pay twenty four dollars because now music isn't valued the same. But it's too much shit going around. Back people, then, that's all they had was that pop out. But it's not that because who you like is who you like. Yeah, it's not so about like it, it, whether I decide, we gonna get it anyway. Not I mean, necessarily. I'm the kind of person that will like niggas gonna get to the music and stream it. Am I the kind of person to do that? Hmm? Like, I'll buy an album. I ain't buy an album. Depend on the artist. Unless it was like a classic album. It depends on since the gift. Like, if it's something, like, I'm not going to say, like, that's just how, like, that's how I'm going to buy the album. Back down, like, I'm going to start buying albums again. But if it's an artist that yeah. I really, really support, I'll buy the album mainstream. Okay, yeah. Fuck no. Because I don't buy shit. I mean, I'm not that against it, <laughs> okay. but I'll buy albums for aesthetics. I'm like, paying that. Like, I'll buy, like, shit, and I'm, I mean, I'll probably do it because he's from Philly, but I buy, like, all meat albums. Only I think because he's from Philly. That's what's up. I bought it first. I, I did buy it first. I feel like, but I stream, I don't actually pop them in, like, oh, fuck the listen, yeah. like. You I buy just, them all, you throw them away. I threw all my albums away when I bought them. I threw them away. Yeah. I just bought them and said, fuck it, I support it. Well, no, I keep the physical copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep One the physical day, copy. your kids going to be able to sell that shit. Man, they're going on the internet, nigga. I keep the physical copy. Like, when, when you Mary J. Bond did her next album, like, you could have started, like, a million dollar collection for your kids. Right. I don't think it's coming back. But you can tell me, you can tell me. And I don't have to come back to Everybody's saying it about everything. Like, it don't got to come back. You can tell me you told me so. Yeah, we you will. know I always do. Uh, so it's nothing new. The intro, what we do, or summertime. What's the question? You, which is the you brought this up to me, right? Which, which is, is the Philly anthem? The biggest Philly anthem. Which is the, the Philly anthem? What would you the, say? The time most, the, the acclaimed, Philly, notable, that, notoriety that gained the most notoriety. Summertime, what we do, or the original Meek intro? Shout out the championship. Damn, that's also hard because I kind of feel like. Who's playing summertime? <laughs> Besides, like, no, people play it, but I feel like it's a nostalgic piece. Like, when they come on, like, oh, shit. Like, but I feel like Meek, like, that, I'm in other seasons that shit come on. And I can tell who's in the club, like, from, like, the club gets it. You know what I mean? So, I don't, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, I kind of feel like at the time, maybe it was summertime, but I feel like now. What about what we do? No, but we're just saying overall because if that's the with that explanation, Meek's piece is gonna be a, a, a nostalgic piece too right. at some point. I mean, I guess like I like, guess it would have to be it would have to be summertime then because I feel like everybody recognizes that like as a Philly piece like even if they I don't said. listen to like current music or even if they're not like into music in general they know that art they know he's from Philly and they know what it means like even I, game like people, rappers yeah. have said this in songs like that shit it make you feel like you from Philly like yeah. I, I don't know initially I said the meat thing and I, you made me think maybe it is summertime but now I'm kind of leaning towards what we do because I remember you was like oh now this, leaning towards what we do this, this is why right and then I was like meat funny as shit <laughs> I'm thinking he's about to say something <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking like wait a minute uh, <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it in the air. I don't know. It's time. What we do? Oh wait, Paul, listen. So this is the thing you said. Yo, like, my, like older people are gonna really listen to the Meek intro, like how younger people are. Like you, you mentioned the club. Everybody in the club. So yeah, like, of course. Sometimes I'm not gonna play in the club. But no, it younger, does. but but, but, it that, yeah. but I feel like young people not really into but summertime. But so do Meek though. As much as older too. people. But I feel what? Yeah, but older people know the lyrics to "Summertime." Older and, and, and then once they die, the and we be old, we yeah. go on to the. I think right, what we do is the perfect generation. balance of both. I think it's right in the middle, and I see both age brackets. Unfortunately, Wilson was the first to do it, so that's therefore, okay. I feel like he. I think that's, right, that's why. I thought she was tripping at first. That's a good point. Like old heads and young, like but, young kids, when they hear that shit, like like the beat itself is like, oh, like. But I still feel like summertime. I, still, I mean, I don't know. Like it just. My, and I think a lot of people. I feel like don't know about summertime. I think I'm coming to that realization. No, they do. I don't know if it's as big everywhere. A lot everywhere. of people know about summertime, summertime too. Do. Like yeah. more than that's what, what we I'm do. Saying, like yeah. more than what we do. That's because you had to think about like not that just us of listening to me. Biggest record. Yeah, it's the like, biggest record. So it's, it's like, like he's also it might Smith, be though. his biggest so record. That's the whole point. I feel kind of kind of forgotten in time. It's not. You think so? It's really not. Wasn't forgotten in time. Music, hell yeah. Not summertime. Not summertime. Not summertime. I think what we do. It's more no, listen, than what made me ask you that question was because I didn't know that Summertime was as worldwide as it received mm-hmm. as it is. I was watching this interview with um, Tamala Jones, you know, the crazy ex-girlfriend from Yeah, I still like her, yeah. Yeah, like, so I was watching her interview, and um, sure I don't know what they were talking about, but she brought up the song Summertime. 
Um, Let's go, man. Continue your opinion. She brought up the song Summertime, you know, when she was talking about working with Will Smith and stuff like that. And she was saying, like, when they work together at? I think they did a show or something together. I don't know. Like, it was something. She was she was talking about something, but she got on the topic of the song "Summertime," and she was like, "Yeah, he had just did that song Summertime," and she was like, "That song was everywhere," and she was like, "Yo, that song made me feel like I was from West Philly," and I was just like, "Oh shit!" And just you know, say you wanted to fucking just, go. See no, just just, just listening like, you know, to and listening yeah. to like you know Game say it in his raps, like you know, Game always did it always made Game was a like it made me feel. Like, I think that's the song that like. But I still kind of feel like. I feel like that's the song that like generations and generations like it just transcends generations because like you said it's. The song is over 20, 20 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is and it, like, like and it still feels good when you hear it. I mean, it kids that nowadays, what we do, like, though. I'm not going to say no, that all don't kids. No, don't get me wrong. But, that still get me hyped. But summertime, it's like, I feel like It's that. more of a, like, it's just a vibe. Like, yeah, I kind of like, feel like. And I'm going to say it. What we do sounds like Philly better in summertime. It could. We ain't that fucking nice. Not in the summertime. Yes, it do. No, it don't. And even Philly, what we do is Philly. Philly but you no, have to no, think no, that no. Philly is at its peak in the summertime. What we do is a wintertime song. It don't matter. Yeah, it does matter. But no. it's both seasons. Philly is a summer, summer city, time, though. So. Flip side is only Philly summer. Is a summer. What we do is universal. I no, would, it's I, not. But Philly is a summer city. I would not visit. If I was not from Philly, I would not visit, visit Philly, Philly until the, winter, until the summertime. What's the winter city? Chicago. Antarctica. Um, <laughs> like think about cities that you think about like going to in the winter time. No, like, Chicago is New, New York. York too. Chicago, New York, New York is New a winter York. city. It's New York, everybody, fuck New York. Chicago, um, nobody wants to go to Chicago. I don't want to go to New York in the summertime. I hate New York. I can hear care less. I would, I, I can stay. I mean, only time I'm going to New York in the summer is for work. Otherwise, I gotta stay in Philly. Like to me, Philly is you more of a Chicago vibe in the summer. summer. Yeah, that's a winter. They city. don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. I'm the sure they summer. don't. But if, but when you think about like globally, like when people think about like, like oh, where Miami can is I, a summer city. Where can I go? That's like, a year-round city because it's always summer there. Right? No, it gets cold. No, it gets cold. When I was just down there, it was cold. Like but I it's said, just the beach and like stuff. 60 or something? It was like 50 something. Oh, okay. But as far as the vibe, like I feel like Philly is way more popping than summer. Yeah, it's way more popping. And in any case, yeah. like, you know. If you ask me, like, where you from? I'm going to come visit. I'm like, visit in the summer. Right. Like, but to me, that's everywhere. Why would summertime. I go in the wintertime? I want to be there. I mean, you, the city you can have a lot of. You winter person. Yeah, but the city may like, have a lot of, like, winter activities or, like. But to me, traveling people go whenever they want to go. They do. But Philly has a we lot like more going shit. on in the summer. Like uh, our city is live like twenty four seven. I want to say in the summer, like it's just all day. Like it's just consistent cookouts, kickbacks, shit going on in the city. Well, what? Our I'm shows, still in Chicago. Like, what makes Chicago different? Like, what makes Chicago just, different? I, mean, I, don't I don't know. know. To don't me, they're the same. But I feel like if it's the windy city and it's cold, I'm about to go in the winter. But the like, point is, why well, I'm going go in the summer? <laughs> the bottom line is, I feel like even if you listen, you gonna watch your fur, nigga. Yeah, that's you know just flex on the Chicago. Summertime in the winter is it when you hear it in the winter it makes you wish it was summer. Summer, yeah. So that's why also it's it's like I, I think that's the most notable do song in January, January or August. I mean, yeah, it still gets you hype, but I just feel like more people know the lyrics to Summertime. It's for than my kids. I'm sure Summertime was high on the Billboard charts. Who That's reps Philly do. more though? Was it, did Will Smith rep us more? Or did me? Will don't fucking more? rep Philly. We already know that. I think he do. He's just not a street rapper. Like yeah. only street rappers take. Will wasn't like kind of hard street. street. Yeah, I feel like Will Smith too. Do too though. And plus, it's like he don't do interviews. If Fresh Prince of Bel Air never happened, I don't think most people know Wilson from Philly. But really? he put it all in his music. Yeah. His music Philly. don't exist no more. Don't but Summertime was about Philly. He was talking to about the black people. Niggas know parents don't just don't understand the other shit. Motherfuckers parents with the school with Will. Yeah, so but it's still, like, like, there are a lot of people don't know he has Overbrook Entertainment. Production company, but it's like it's not a thing. Kevin Hart to me, he talks about it more. Me, where no me. That's well, Kevin dumb, Hart just like, talks more. Period. Because he's a comedian. His whole career. Not even just because he's a comedian. He does more interviews. Okay, when you talk about okay, how has bro Will? How has he? He's like, a, in his Elliot Wilson interview. He was talking about Philly all through up and down that interview. I do. I, I remember when him, you know, talking about growing up in Philly and all this I mean, shit. the question? And having to, I mean, but that was an interview. So no, I mean, but I feel, questions. I feel and me even, and Kevin Hart. Even carrying a chip on his shoulder that, you know, feeling like, even though his image wasn't like this tough nigga, but mm-hmm. you wasn't going to play with me anyway. Like, I mean, they asked you where you grew up. 
I hope he just went live. So he's gonna say, yeah, I grew up in West Philly. I went over my dad did this. I, I met Jazz here. Da, da, da. So he got talk about that. But I feel he's never like carried it with him or embodied it for whatever reason. I think Kevin Hart meek embodies him more. I think it's because he don't really do any like. There's less for us to he's judge. He's done interviews before though. Back in his prime. And also, he's an actor. What actor? Kevin Hart's an actor. But he's a comedian. Like. He's a comedian. Like actors don't really talk much. They don't really do. They don't do as many interviews, interviews unless it's like that. you know promo work. I do feel movie. like he's more known as an actor than a rapper, which is why you think his music don't exist anymore. But to a generation of people, like you know, before the fuck about about before us, music. it's like they do care. Even about older music. people, once he started acting, like oh, this nigga's an actor now. That's that's what's up. Bro. Right, but they still know parents just don't understand. No, they still know. Girls I know he rap, but they don't care. They still know your arms are too short to swing with my nigga, to you did Ali. Like like that's what's like up. they yeah right but I'm saying like the older people and everybody knows summertime every like uh-huh. people still know this so he get more slander than he gets recognition or praise for his music but I guess that's because it wasn't hard not because it wasn't nice especially at the time he did get jiggy with it like it was like he was just he looked at cheese but that was way right. after it wasn't that far after summertime. Not summertime, but from the time that his music career it's started. Like which might have been eight years after. It was the all in the 90s. 80s, but that's, it's a, no, the late 80s and like, you know. When the parents don't understand, come on, late 89 or 90? Yeah, it was like the late 80s. Yeah, but was, even even before parents just don't understand, they were doing music, so. But he popped off then. Right, but I'm saying, like, you know, people still knew who the who uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and mm-hmm. Fresh Prince were. I thought Jazzy Jeff gets more praise just as a DJ himself. Than Will gets as a rapper, and they were a collector. I can I don't know because I, I hear people say of, Jazzy Jazz is one of the best DJs ever. Nobody cares about Wilson as a rapper. Like it's just whatever. You you happen to rap. But at even one point even time. when you talk to an older person, like back in the day, it was really more so about the DJ than it was the rapper. Of course. So that's probably you know why. But same with Airbnb and Rakim. But people love Rakim because they love him as a rapper. Hey, Jeff, I mean, I don't know. I feel I, I feel like I hear people. When people mention Will Smith's music career, it's always the Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. Jazzy Jeff was like it's that both I mean, he's still no, like definitely boy. Definitely, but I know I've heard people just respect him as a DJ. Well, yeah, Nobody cares or respects Will Smith respect as a rapper. Him. Like, they don't care. I don't know. I know a lot if of If he stopped, if he never acted, Will Smith, was still, was not going to be a sub Hall I mean, of Fame of rap. He probably is a better actor than he was a rapper, but, but people still, he was still known yeah, for rapping. Yeah, he was still widely received. He won the first yeah. rap Grammy, like, Cause and nobody respected wild. it. That's what I'm saying, nobody like, respected it at the time. Who's he, other people thought he, other people, people. The Academy respected it. <laughs> back when people, back when people in the rap community hated the Grammys even more. Shit. So back when NWA was That's out, you think people was made happy that Fresh Prince was like, it's amazing. So he dropped the same year as NWA. People like, yeah, he deserved an NWA. Like, definitely. I mean, Over Ice Cube and we, shit. We know it's more no. political, but at the same time, it's exactly. like... Exactly, it was cheesy and whatever. Nobody would give a fuck about Will Smith rap. But you have to think that Grammys are commercial. So granted, yes. NWA might have been He's more appealing. He's fucking being that Macklemore. It was like Macklemore of his time. It's granted, like, you know, it's commercial. So NWA may have been more appealing to the hood. At the time, and respect, but it, we'll and know more the masses at the time. Like, like, no, no, not to the masses. No, not to the masses. No, he was more like he Dude, was. You're yeah, you're tripping. Then kind of, NWA at the time. Are you fucking kidding me? Why did he win the Grammy? This was because of, why did Macklemore win over Kendrick? This is before NWA. because he's safe or he's white. Like not that he's like right. Macklemore. More appealing to the masses. <laughs> like who's the masses? Fresh Prince wasn't the biggest Who's rapper the in 1990. So Fresh, you saw you are you telling me he was the biggest high selling rapper in 1990? Why do you I keep mean, saying the 90s? They were like popping in the 80s. When did the first yeah. album come out? 88 or 90? It's like two Google years it. apart. It's same, 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 the same thing. I just kind of feel like it's a years after 1985 yeah. to 1990. When did the first album come out? Niggas be rapping in high school when they was active. 1987. Okay, 87. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of older people, like they they do respect like yeah. Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff. Rap has changed, also, Q. Of like has changed. rap has changed significantly. And I know his legacy is not here. And you know, East Coast and their West Coast rap was different, singer, especially in the '80s and the '90s. Most, like, though their most successful singer was uh, single was Summertime. That mm-hmm. was their most their second Grammy and peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot. So they won the Grammy Grammy for parents just don't understand. That was the name of the album. In nineteen eighty nine, the song. Okay. For best rap performance. And then Summertime was like their most successful single. 
So that's what I'm saying. Like, no, it was 1991. Okay. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, they were a successful duo. It's not like... Now, Kid and Play, that's debatable. Like, a lot of people laughed at them. But Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff, they got their their respect. To me... Okay, we'll see what's wrong. But to well, me, yeah, your audience don't really know much about no, that. No, I'm just talk to people. 2005. Anyway. I'm going to just talk to people. What? Older people that I've known my whole life. Oh, yeah. And I've yeah. never heard anybody give a fuck about Will Smith's career on a widespread thing. Like, it's not a thing. Like, Man, he's, he's not an actor. people's top 10, but... Not in a top 50. Like, who, nobody cares about the Fresh Prince of the Rapper. Right, but that don't mean it didn't mean nothing at the time. I didn't... I never said people it didn't mean nothing People don't mention Roxanne Shantae, but she was very... She important. didn't mean shit for real for her at the time. She won some battles. No, yeah. Yes, Her career did. didn't amount to shit. Their but, career amounted to more shit than Roxanne Shantae. That's, Shante. where, that's where you're getting it. That's what I'm trying to let you know. That at the time, she did mean something. Like she Where was she was at? Exactly. Like, at the time. But how are you going to compare Before, Fresh Prince to her? Like, it's I'm not, I'm not comparing the two. I'm saying that to like in that era, they meant something. I didn't say you mean that at the time. I'm talking about that legacy. The, whole, the original thing was his acting career has basically completely surpassed the music. The shit basically don't matter no more. No, the, and it doesn't. I can't say it don't matter completely. It just don't matter as much. It fucking seamlessly, basically. Like you, you're don't really matter. extreme. It's just like because nobody cares it's about it's the freshman as a rapper. Summertime parents don't understand. Parents just don't understand. Yeah, I mean, Nobody's you know, running back to that first album. That's not like a clash that people be like, yo, remember that, Joan? He's kids, with the DJ. Of course, the same thing about me of course we're not doing that. Like, any rap conference I've ever seen, whether it's old niggas like Ebro, Elliot Wilson, anybody, I'm like, yo, remember he's with the DJ? Like, <laughs> like, nobody goes back to that album. I mean, I don't know. I know a lot of old heads that like Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they may like, not. It, like I said, rap has changed a lot. So it's like, like, I think that like what you're comparing to, say that it they didn't to, mean shit to him, and I think it didn't mean like, it's like it's kind of fucked up. It definitely does. They didn't say it didn't mean shit. Yeah, like that yeah. was rap. Yeah. When, yeah. when, yeah. when it was when it was rap career, it was rap career. Rap career don't mean shit now. But what we see, yeah, his rap career basically don't mean shit now. That's okay because he's an actor. So yes, shout out his acting career. But my thing is like when he was a rapper, he was significant. He meant something. Then it didn't matter. What you mean it didn't matter? Because it what? What are moving them fuck on? Yeah, our point was that it mattered at the time. <laughs> it That's what we were saying. It mattered when it mattered. I said it, it mattered. Shout out to him for he's with the DJ in summertime. Shout, I'm glad you started. Shout acting. out to, to Jazzy. Everybody's Jazz. glad you started acting, Will. Thank you, and you still don't rep through like that, but it's cool. Shout um, Jazz. What do you think Meek got to do to be a legend? If or if he is he a legend Meek? already? Mm-hmm. I feel like Meek is 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 borderline legend. Borderline? Like you, not just in Philly. No, he's definitely. He's a legend. legend. Yeah, we know that, of course. But would you yeah. say so to be a general legend? He almost be a borderline. Mm, mm. I think he got some more time. Yeah, he got know. some time. I mean, he's very young. No, he not. Not, really. not in hip hop. Not in rap. You don't think most so? people are legends at his at his juncture. Already. You think so? If they gonna be a legend, he's was Jay Z a legend at Meek? Thirty? Oh yeah. Actually, no, they no, started at 26. Yeah, I'm saying, okay, yeah. Because he was like 30, when he started. But he again, 70. I look at shit like... <laughs> yeah, Jay-Z I feel like Ho was 50, a right? legend at Blueprint. Yeah, and we're just like, oh, Jay is a legend. In like, 2001, so that was, what, five years after Reason Dow. So he's like 30, he's 31. Time, is he Meek 30 or 31? I don't know how he is. Is Meek 30 already? I think Meek is I've heard him say he's 30, I think. He's like 32. I gotta find well, this But even then, like, I don't feel like it's fair to compare, like, oh, Jay-Z got a success at 31. But then I he also kind of feel like... Say are most pe- I think you say are most people legends at this point, and I think a lot of people no. generally are. Mm-mm. I don't think there's an age on legend on legendary yeah. status. Because I feel like you could blow up at 50, and, like, because of what you did who in you your impact, what? you could be a legend at 52. Who do you, you think, think was, like, like, who you think think was a late legend? legend? Who do you think is a late legend? Steve Harvey, Steve Oprah. Jobs, Oprah. Mm. Um, well, to me... Two chains. Well, you, I, don't, I don't even know. You talking about people that blow up to mid thirties? I'll take that. J.K. Rowling's the writer. Like, okay, yeah, that, that definitely to changes it. Yeah, you ain't like, pop to you thirty or forty, fifty. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Steve, I like Steve Harvey though because he's been working this whole time. And Steve Harvey's yeah. been working since twenty. And now right. it's like, like it's that. undeniable that like he is a fucking legend. Like Mika's thirty one, y'all. Yeah, yeah I that's think he's wow. Yeah. But um, but I agree. I he was like twenty. I think. I think if he drops another like consensus acclaim, yeah, then album, it's like he'll start he'll push his way into those conversations. Yeah. It's not to say that his his music is like he lacked the He's not going nowhere though. 
hope not. Yeah, he's not going nowhere. I think that everybody else needs to see that Meek is like yeah. a legend, like what Philly see. Mm-hmm. I, I remember like because I think the he's whole... the most successful rapper out of Philly. Like a facts. rapper, yeah, like, rapper, like rapper. period. Who's the singer you put him over? That you put him over him? A singer? Or a rapper? Is that what you're trying to say? What you Which mean? mean? You kept emphasizing rapper, like the most successful oh, rapper. Well, he's the most we have a lot of rapper. singers out of Philly. I'm, I wasn't. I wasn't yeah. even thinking about. Well, singers. But she's saying oh. most successful rapper out of Philly. Yeah, I agree. Because some people still try to hold on to beans. I'd be like, nah, no, no, like, over, like but... that's over. Fame All was he's he's a great... little commercial success. Yeah. Will Smith, most of his commercial success came from acting. acting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So it's like me. He's like the most successful rapper. rapper out of mm-hmm. Like his success, his fame is all from rapping. Yeah. Like yeah. With you know, the jail stints. To yeah. me, which is, which but is I think that added, to that added to it adds, but I think it also could have easily died the shit down at times. Nah, like, I think it added to it. It added to it. Because like even with this prison reform. This last it was one added, of course. A lot of it is gimmicky. When he went to jail between the first two albums, I know he wasn't really on him like that back then, whatever, but that kind of did kill some of them. But the Nicki thing helped at the time. I feel if the Nicki thing wasn't there, I don't know what would have happened with the second album. Because that one sold well. But then when he went to jail that time, it was like a long time between that, though. And the first album wasn't that wildly alike and shit like that. So I don't know. That's why people say. Up until like wins and losses in this one, people was like, all oh, he got is the intro. I don't really got shit anyway. Like, house party. Like, so. I think this album helps. Which is crazy because, like, Flamers 2 was full of exactly. bangers. Like, exactly. But and I'm a knew boss. That. Even for the new fans, I'm a boss still fire to me. That like, shit's still that's fire. That's my shit. That shit is still fire. And, like, low key, the Dreams and Nightmare intro is, like, five years old. Facts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that shit is crazy. And it didn't blow up till last year when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. That's not true. Ain't that a bitch. Vinny is not that's true. real shit. No, not. <laughs> that song didn't blow up. That song blew it's up. It's been blew up. that song been blew up. <laughs> Uh, well, Maybe it became more commercial on like a large scale. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I mean, I feel no, like, I'm not. But I feel like in regards to like the party scene, the club scene, the the socialite scene, it been blew up. That's like been a, that song been a song to throw on. Like, I mean, like throw that I shit on. in the hood, that shit was popping. It but been I didn't popping. Hear, like, Even in commercials, the streets it was popping. I'm oh, curious to see like some stuff. Like people put like, that song white on. People love dreams and nightmares. Right, right. they, they like, put that shit on at the most white events, and they be like, oh, oh my like, man, like, you be like, so I have to see. I'm curious. Slow well, down. <laughs> on this last year, I'm curious. Was it some type of spike in the song? Um, and that's oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, from the Super Bowl, absolutely. It entered. It I think it was the matter of the Super Bowl and Did the anticipation. Never reached that point and the the fish, no. I don't know where. Okay. Okay. I think that super, the Super Bowl and the anticipation for his next release mm-hmm. was what yeah. put so and much pressure on jail. it and him being and on jail. reached it higher than it did when it first came out. When it first came out, that's yeah. What I'm but it's been big though. It's been big. But, but like, no, that's to her point. That's fair then. Yeah, it's it been, reached it, higher than it did the first time. Higher than it did the first time. Absolutely. Let me see. Also, why you looking at up? Um, oh, let's see. Uh, da, da. You still hate big areolas, Penny? Yeah. Big areolas? Big areolas, Tyree. That's the, the part around the nipple. Right? Yeah, around the nipple. Why would you hate that? I don't understand, Tyree. I don't know why, Jay. Is that bad thing? And I've been really yeah, low-key. Like, you, know, you want to talk about holding something in? I've been holding this in, like, since that day. That was months ago. I was mad because things like, oh, you don't got no examples on deck. And I was like, damn, no, I can't, I can't think Are you know, into big areolas? I just like titties, and I don't mind big areolas. Like, yeah, I, hate I can them. say I like them. I sent well. you examples. Those were fucking. She bad. went to the most extreme big web areola, MD like infected areola joints ever. Infected. <laughs> but I've been seeing so many <laughs> badass. <laughs> Could you imagine somebody saying the areola is infected? <laughs> like I would know the response to that. Like you got tea tree oil, that might help. Like, <laughs> like my areola is. But, but since then, I've seen so many sexy ass big areola titties. I'm like, it's just too late to send them now. They're like, are they like perky, okay. like a natural? Sag. Both. Both. I mean, the natural sag, sag is sexy you know. too. Hell yeah. I, just, I feel like the natural sag is sexier than the extreme perkiness. Yeah. I, I can't say that. I feel like that. That's how I feel yeah, it. too. But I think there's something I really think with sexy the sag, on the natural they have to body. Be full. Like they yeah, can be flat. They can be flat. It's, that's gross. Like, they can be like, like actual, like, you know, full breasts plump. and like a nice. Like it's sag because they're heavy, not sag because mm. like they're old. Exactly. Mm. Not because they like look like they've been getting sucked right. on since she was born. <laughs> <laughs> sad. That's sad right there. Like, bitch, it looks like you've been watching me in three months. You need an implant analyst. I don't think I know kids. Like, like, bitch, your titties for that Implants and a lift. Shout out to the lifts. 
a two, I, I, two I, I, I learned that the lips, bitch, don't go for the implants no more. You get the lip from you. Yeah, I mean, the, their breasts are already big. But you know what? One of my girlfriends told me, um, she got a, she ended up getting, I think she got like a reduction or a something. Reduction like, something. A reduction in the lip? Yeah. Prayers to her. Prayers to her. But um, she was What size were they? Do you know? I don't remember, but she like had over eight since we were kids. But nice. But you know, anyway, she was telling God me that the, her. the her. thing with uh, lifts is that you know, as you gain and lose weight, the same thing the, you run the risk of it happening. Oh yeah, it's the same thing with like, like fat, getting flat fat transfers. Again. It's like if you transfer natural fat from your stomach or arms to your, to your ass. That's why they gotta transfer more. It's, it's natural fat, so if you lose weight, you lose the fat. You know what I mean? Yeah, the same like thing. you yeah. run the risk of. That's why bitches say it's real. No, it's not. Because no. naturally, like, you know, like, things happen. Yeah, you're, if your body's natural, then it's natural. Now, if you get implants, like, and even with those, you got to get those changed every 10 years. Yeah, they're going to end up sagging. And that's and crazy, too. That's a good investment to me. Really? Yeah, it's like if I got to get an oil change eventually. So. My cousin, my cousin wife like, got a, a tummy tuck and something else after her last baby, and they got pregnant like, within the same year. And I was like, that was a waste of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was like sad. Like if I start going bald and they say, "Yo, we want to fix your hairline and be perfect, but you gotta get a read of every five years," nigga, say no fucking more. Nigga. That's a good investment for you. Hell yeah, really? I ain't going bald. I can't afford that. Yeah, well, I, I can't couldn't afford it. I'm Speaking of like our shallow things, I couldn't date a nigga with like a fake, fake hairline. Well, I, I also don't like men. I was gonna say you may not know. Really? They getting better and better with these like restoration. I mean, yeah, if I don't know, then and... I don't know. But yeah. like, if I know, we'll be find out years later. Y'all are in. It would no. Like, really? It would, it would, you would break up. I, with I don't think I would break up with him, but uh, I, I also won't be as attractive. I feel like you might clown them, and they might be over. Right? After yeah, they clown them, they to come love me, woman. Yeah. Like I, I, I think that's, then that's very shallow. That that allows yeah, women to be very like right? superficial, and it's like you're a man. Just, say, just deal with it. Like it is what it is. It's like damn. I was just about to say I love um, you so far, back to the like even if we go back to the shallow conversation, it's like I don't like men who dress too cute. It's weird. Like, you dress too cute for me. That's a dub. <laughs> like, I don't like men who are fashionable. All right. You, like, it's you know a level. Like, What's your method man shit? Like, from fucking Wu-Tang. Oh, like, but then what's fashionable, though? You dress like a man. Well, fashionable Because I feel me. like it's some really swaggy niggas, and I'm like... A swaggy yeah, nigga might be more be, fashionable than a nigga that's dressed down and like dripping in, in Balenciaga. But the, that's what I'm saying. Like a, a, a swaggy nigga is all about the attitude. Like it's not really about necessarily. But that's fashion though. Fashion is uh, attitude. No, not just aura. Like, not, fashion not, is attitude. Not necessarily because even mm. with Method Man and big clothes, that's still fashion too. Yeah, that's like, and attitude. And Dan was taking these brands and their clothing and like creating other shit for people. It was a lot bigger than European yeah. clothing. So like that's fashion. They, like that, made the puff that's puff more so it. style than fashion. I feel like style no, but always it's still fashion. fashion. The, style is still a part of fashion. Yeah, it is. So so that's what I'm saying. But style over la- like style is above fashion. I just I just I just don't like niggas who just dress too cute. Meaning that what's too cute? I'm about to tell you if you let me. <laughs> but what's too cute though? Too cute is but like, what the brunch right, boots? Right, exactly. He the keep brunch asking me, like, are you Don't wear the brunch boots and ask Penny on a date. It's a dub. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like I don't like men who wear tight jeans. I don't like men who take too long to get dressed. What's too long? I don't like. <laughs> but what's too like long? thirty minutes? Like I feel like minutes? all men should be dressed in thirty, like under thirty minutes. How long does it you get dressed? You no shower, right? <laughs> Yeah, no shower. You include it. Shower it doesn't take me three minutes to get dressed. Yeah, but like <laughs> if I don't gotta take a shower, like, hell no. <laughs> like if I see my nigga pick it up. I don't got an iron, right? Oh, I don't need an iron, yeah. so I don't know. Like, Is that too cute to iron? So kind you're just taking right, relax. But I mean, unless it's a suit or something like that. But I kind of feel like getting, I kind of feel like getting dressed but is the whole process. But if you put them on, they're supposed to fall right out. Mm. No, it's not. Right? I thought, I thought it was just me. I, like, they fall right out of mine. Because yours is tight. Not always. But if you don't have a tight jeans. Even if I got on a shirt, it's like, like I didn't iron this. You see wrinkles here, I'm but it's please. just like, it go with me. But you had a jacket. You don't iron nothing. That's different. I haven't ironed. Since I you was have like, iron? I haven't ironed since. No, I don't. I don't own an iron. But I, I don't think I, I do iron put since most shit in a dryer though. I just <laughs> if you dry it and fold it, it won't be wrinkled. I'm not a good fool, but I do. So but, I iron but, but in any case, like I that's that's what I mean by like dressing cute too cute. Like niggas to pick out their outfits 
and like you know have it laid on the bed and said no I'm gonna I'm gonna rock this with that and do this with me. that. I don't like <laughs> that. Yeah, I don't. But then again, like you're not the demographic that I would be. I'd be stressed. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like just pack all the belts and then we'll figure out we fucking just wait. Pack here. all the belts. Absolutely not. Like, see, I wouldn't. Oh, and you travel a nigga? Oh, imagine if he just packed all of this shit. He's super did he stressed say, out. Did he say he doesn't leave yeah. New York with less than, I think he said like 15 bags, and he doesn't wow. leave the country with less than 27? Did he I mean, well, you did know what the that. rumor is about him. Well, it's I mean, like, I expect relax. it. Relax. Like, you know. Relax. <laughs> so, you want to party? Like, that's what I'm saying. You want to party party? So, so that's what I mean when I say, like, <laughs> Yo, you know. 27 bags is really fucking ridiculous. That's so. intense. That is intense. <laughs> So that's what I, I mean. I mean, depending on how long he's staying, that's no, very, very, no, very intense. No, I don't care where you're going. But that's what I mean. If he stays over a few months. No, that's what I mean when I say that. Probably he'll buy some clothes when you're nigga. He's a wait. Whatever he forgot, he'll buy. Oh, but I fight 27 bags, you better not forget shit. I'm going to fire my assistant. If I fight 27 bags <laughs> and one thing is missing, my assistant would immediately lose their fucking job. <laughs> Where's my peppermint? Right, like, like you had one fucking 27 job. 27 bags, and you forgot the fucking blue socks? Like, you're fired. Like, you're fired. Right. Um, what was it? Uh, yeah, so also, about, your, about the Harris kids. Mm. That's on there? Or that's, that, that was improv? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know, you know, I feel like a lot, like, maybe because of, recently in my life, right, kids, kids like a hot man. top. No, maybe not, not, not uh, that. But kids been a hot top. Are you expected? Not at all. I don't know. I had a dream about fishing. I was going to say that y'all like, when y'all plan on having kids. Somebody pregnant. Can I play y'all gender reveal? There will be no gender reveal. Why not? Because I would know before y'all in the doctor's office on the first day you no, can know. No, just let me plan it. It'll be fine. No, okay. It'll be real quaint. It's not nothing funny. Champagne like and stuff. Because <laughs> I'm a know already, so what's the point of reveal? Yeah, like... Why you want to know? Really? I, didn't know I don't want to like as I get older, I don't want to know what the sex of my baby is until I have it. Yeah, that's oh, that's no. old school. When That's do you, when you find out four months? Yeah, I think four to five months. months. The first day? Yeah. I felt like that too, but as a re- like, I just think it was like Remy Ma and Papoose. I thought oh, they, they don't know what they, they didn't know what they, they were having there. until they had it. And I think that's the. <laughs> they the I think when you got money, yeah. you could do shit like that. What is it, a boy or girl? It's a girl. Because you don't have to plan, like, you know, getting pink clothes and all Yeah, of course. Shit. I mean, yeah. if you don't have to get pink clothes, you can just buy, you can buy neutral shit. You can buy green and white and. All right, you know gender. I mean? Yellow and white. <laughs> neutral. Gender, right, neutral gender clothing. neutral. No, but I... Made the nursery safari things. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's, boy, you're a girl. <laughs> that's usually what people do, but I think the element of surprises was the... Like, so that's what you took from it? You took it like... You took from it, most people want to know so they can plan, but you're like, you got money. My you parents didn't know yeah. either birth, like with me or my older brother. I, I do think, just, especially like, like, you know, in kind of poor households where it's like you have to like start getting yeah, stuff before the baby is born. And you know this whole gender neutral shit is like new to our generation. Mm-hmm. So it's like if if my mom knew she was having a girl, she was getting girl shit, pink, yellows, whites, like you know, girl shit. And I know, but my my fear, you know, I just can't have a girl. Why though? Because he full of shit. Like he just. You only want one kid. I'm leaning towards that. Just one. I'm the only child, so why not? You know. But mom's not the only child, is she? What can I do? Why are you so pressed <laughs> to like repeat your life? Right. I'm great. Like, he's, he's like so Lena did such an amazing job. Like, I'm just taking the blueprint and running with it. Like you want your son to be a fucking junior. You want a he gonna run a podcast. You want to pay your birthday too. You want to have a podcast. The, the Q Junior podcast. You want to wear a size 13 shoe so he can feel. I his don't play. want him to wear no son. Be better. Will he cry? Eleven. Like, That's the question. I, I'm, I heard I didn't cry that much. But Good. to your point, Lena no has siblings. My dad, the Howards are the only. Child. There's like five boys in a row that were only child. So again, why are you like this? What you mean? <laughs> like, why do you want to repeat your life so bad? You want to have twin daughters? <laughs> You'd be upset. <laughs> I would cry. Sorry, you're just so... at, you're now added to the list of people no. wishing this upon me. You, you won't be the I first one. I would cry if you had twin daughters. Like, he would be sick. He would be like, ah, oh my god, he went here to end of it. Like, nigga, I told you. So that we should really do a general reveal of his twin. Yo, if I die, if we have two different balloons. <laughs> remember this quote. Like, always hear this in your head. Like, me to you, I told you. Oh, like, that's, that's like a thing. That's, that's cute. That's my thing to you. I told you. I always told you. That's cute. I don't make girls. Those are no words. And you don't know what you make because you don't he got He said I got you. tested. Uh, it was like, how do you do that? <laughs> he really that, was like, that wait, shit was hilarious. It was like, 
How they do? Like he was really the whole attitude change. Shout out to Ant. He's like one of my favorite people on the show. Yeah, I think he is my favorite person. Some people say yeah, he don't need to be back home. It's time to retire. I was like, what? Like, who said that about Ant? Ain't nothing. Really? Everybody don't appreciate Ant and anything that's. Everybody don't appreciate. Ant is a breath of fresh ghetto air. Ghetto king, as you said. Yes, he's the. Puerto Rican ghetto king. Can't pull up. Chop it, chop it, and whatever. But, um, do, do y'all think about kids, though? Like, besides, like, you know, timeline. I feel people that ask me because I, I will. Ideally. All right. <laughs> but I think realistically, I probably have four. But right. ideally, I want eight. How, gender doesn't matter. We have all girls, all boys, two, two. I think three, I want mostly sons for selfish reasons, just because I know boys, you know, you're proof. Like, you know, they just stay up their mother's ass yeah. and their mom's Anybody ass. getting beat the fuck up over your mom, you? And right, exactly. Your dad getting beat the fuck up over exactly, your mom. Exactly, like, exactly, like, it, Don't say my nothing mom, to her, like, period. We ain't gonna be beefing. That's cool. But I because beef with your dad. Now, but it's, it's like, like, you know, like, at the end of don't the day, Don't say nothing to her. Like, my mom could call me all types of dickheads and dumb bitches, but it's just like if one of my friends like think they're gonna disrespect my mom in defense of me, it's kind of like it's a dub. Yeah, like I will beat you the fuck up. Like that's my. Be managing it, my mom. Somebody just sees something like that. And I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Right, like I can only imagine if like I was a boy. Yeah, it's next level. It is like what his son is next level. Just like with the daughter father thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, like when. With my dad, like anytime my mom would talk shit about my dad when I was a kid, I would like start crying because it was just like I would want to argue with this bitch. Like I would just want to, <laughs> like I knew I couldn't fight her. So it's like it's just like yo, stop talking about my dad. This lady called my mom a bitch when I was like five. My dad. That shit makes me psycho. This lady called my mom like, a bitch when I was five. My mom wasn't around. I don't like her to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't have no reason. I like, was like, 20 <laughs> years ago. You call my mom a bitch? <laughs> Yo, I really was like five. Okay. And like, to this day, I don't like Miss Pat. She made all the family events. I was like, I'm not making her fucking plate. Like, to this you day. You call my mom a bitch when I was five, bitch. I heard you. Like, yeah. I like, it's just like, I was there. I, I seen you. Right. She was like, she just a bitch. I was like, Never. Call my mother a bitch. Don't say nothing else to me. Like, don't say shit to me. Yeah. See, and that's why I want son. I want daughters too, but I want like a lot yeah. of sons. Yeah, son if I have eight, I want like five sons and three daughters. Sheesh, I want one maybe. If I have four, so why would I say it's crazy? Because I already have a nephew that's like a son. So if I have another one, then it's like my kid and it's like two. So yeah, but your kid is really your kid. Yeah, like, my nephew is really my kid. Right, so. but your kid will really be your kid. It's actually not really your kid. Right. <laughs> it is, though. It's actually not. Like, if you not raise a kid, that's your kid. But not, it's not literally your, like, the difference. But as far as, like, social and responsibility But what wise, I'm saying is it might be different for you. I can't you. wait to your kid like, to cry. Honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting right to y'all. Because y'all used to crying kids. I mean, no, I'm not. Like, I'm just You're like, <laughs> I'm like, what you do for the twin girls? I'll literally, Relax. like, put on my fucking <laughs> headphones and, like, let your kid cry. I'm going to put them in the tub and lock the door. But then also, you know, men have a high, it's been proven that men have a higher tolerance for noise from children because we're not as responsive to mothers. Yeah. As mothers. So, like, yeah, kids can scream and I run did. and drop and break shit and men will be like, okay, whatever. What's yeah, because they, they don't listen to and, anything like, anyway. We, we usually have a response. Zero is noise. Yeah. Like, it's what we're talking still. about is a pain, is it between, like, a painful cry and an attention? cry so men usually will respond to a painful cry like oh they're hurt there's a woman to be like i'm going to respond to like the attention and the painful the cry mother, like what's the going on hurt. period a man like he ain't break nothing what's on tv you know what i mean like it's fine he's bleeding. right he's, he's fine no he so. breathing even if he is bleeding he's, he's fine breathing. like that's how it was oh, isaiah like isaiah, i remember one time i was at church isaiah ran directly to a table the whole church was like oh my god i was like please did he cry mm-hmm. For like two seconds. Two seconds. That's a special baby. Literally, and was like about his business. I just can't believe that day he on Twitter he made it seem like yeah Tyree we made it seem like y'all kids, kids cry like, even my cry even child. my niece that spoiled that don't like me does not cry yeah but we want you to know that's not the norm <laughs> it's like, it was like kids don't cry for no reason Q I'm like yes, they, they don't for they no don't. reason <laughs> says who when you say but when you said absolutely like I took it as a literal and then he was like even if they're swear they're missing their parents I'm like that's different that's a reason when you said no reason like I'm thinking about kids walking around like, uh, uh, 
like just whining and crying. But we can but communicate even if it's a reason them. that we don't think is that deep, like they're still crying for a reason. Like whether they want you to pick them up or they're literally hurt, they're still crying. That's like how they communicate down there. Like, is it? And yeah, they're not giving us dissertations. And doing interviews. <laughs> Not Isaiah. I don't know. Right, maybe Isaiah is like. Isaiah, like, like don't pick me the fuck up. <laughs> <It's> good. <laughs> <laughs> Skyler, if you like, don't pick me the fuck up. It's good. Like we're good. We good, yeah, G. See, no, Keep like, moving. <laughs> we good. Um, but like, I was known for being a crybaby. That's why I was just like, I know my kids probably gonna make me pull my hair out. Because mm-hmm. so? I, I asked my mom. But your kids might be completely different though. Probably. But I asked my mom, like, what was I known for as a baby? She was like crying. Being a fucking noise. Like, because like she said, people one night she took me time. to the hospital because like I just would stop. not stop crying, and she said she thought I, I had a fever a or something was wrong with me, and she said she took me to the hospital, and nothing was wrong, and you know I just kept crying. She said my uncle asked her like, do she ever smile? <laughs> And she said she did something funny, and I laughed. And she uh-huh. was like, yeah, That's my baby it. laughed. Like, uh-huh. But she said that was, like, the thing that I was known for, just crying when I wasn't around my parents and my mom and my grandma. I'm like, I don't know y'all. Like, I was a cool baby. I was in the swing, I've heard. Just be nice. chilling. I like that. My brother was a really happy baby, I heard. Like, he just laughed at everything. They said I was just to myself. Like... <laughs> I ain't pay nobody no mind. Like regardless who I was with, I was just quiet. Like I remember crying when somebody just, woke me up from a nap. Just quiet. That's a lot. Like <laughs> I remember like falling asleep in a car and waking up at my grandparents' house and just being irked and not talking to people. Like I remember that. Like oh, I yeah. hate it again waking up by my sleep. Alright, fuck your child. Moving on. Fuck um, child. Damn, let's fuck our child. Right, fuck your child. Fuck your child. Nah, your tears. Um, Penny has also said before the past. Right, well, last year more so. More than this year, I think. I love talking about rape. I used to love talking about rape a lot. You, who loves talking about rape? You need to reword that um, question. That's what she said. I love talking about rape. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. So, but, you know, you might like this. We had an obsession. Right. Don't be a suicide. Yeah, so, like mental illness. That was like your thing. You asked every guest you had for like 10 episodes straight. About Shout out to Quadruple. But um, so recently, where I've been thinking about this, you've been thinking about rape again. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> but along the rape type of topic, oh my god, Charlotte don't really do it for me anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, don't do it for and you want to know what's ironic? That him saying R. Kelly, his music is just not that good. Mm-hmm. It's just like you're yeah. not that good. Yeah, like like knowing <laughs> that you're a rapist. And knowing that, you know, you're... Even this Jessica Reed, like, it hasn't blown up. And that's just, like, shocking to me. Is it another person? That came they, no, the they did a documentary. They released a documentary about it a few days ago. Uh-huh. With, um, and it only got, like, 3,000 views on YouTube. So it's like nobody's talking about it. And even when that, sh- that story came out, nobody, all the outlets didn't say anything uh-huh. until TMZ released him responding to the allegations. Yeah, like, a week or two later. <laughs> right, and it's just like... Charlamagne, like you just don't. Maybe you weren't that great. Maybe this rape shit took the the pink lens, removed the pink lens from my eyes, mm. and I finally saw what you were. Just like you felt that way about R. Kelly. And but the difference with R. Kelly is that he is that great. <laughs> the music is fucking great. Like just um, fuck what y'all talking about. Straight up and down, yeah. like the music is just fucking great. Like, but you know, just just to be on, to be honest, I can say it probably isn't. Mostly that, but I feel also the whole m- mental health shit. He like that shit annoys me. It's a to, selling point. Yeah, like he just be super forcing that shit, whatever. The, the podcast me is the same. I'm thinking like, damn. I like, haven't listened to that in like a year. I was like, damn, what happened? This thing really just kind of like. We, I still we like heard shit about the HBO show. I think they dropped them. Like, they probably did. It was too controversial. Yeah, with the rape. rape. Mm-hmm. The rape shit they dropped them. I'm mm-hmm. good off that. If I was a network like fucking executive, <laughs> I'd be like, whoa. Yeah. Not rape going and that, child uh, molestation, yeah. we're not dealing with. Maybe okay. if you punch a bitch in the face, yeah. We'll maybe physical abuse, you. maybe. 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 Domestics, but rape, rape? And child molestation. You know? They're taking advantage out here. That's different. Speaking of it real quick, because kind of Especially like, if, if there's inconsistencies in, in one the story, story that yeah. you told and the next story that you told. If there wasn't like inconsistencies in the stories that he told, then it would kind of be like a, a his word against hers. Story. And plus, there's somebody job on the line. You gotta think like it, it's it's bigger than just the person that we're thinking about sponsoring and giving the show to. Like, is me as the executive? If I have to say so, to be like, yes, let's move forward with it because I believe him. 
and then it comes out later on that it's a bigger mm-hmm. a bigger skin than what it is. Like, now my job is on the line. Like, right. oh, you believe that. Mm-hmm. And I'm somebody that's probably getting paid more than Charlamagne, worth more than right. Charlamagne, more on the line. And it's just like, I'm not going to take that chance. So and, it's and, a dub. And, and like, on mm-hmm. the other hand, it's like, this is also bigger than Charlamagne yeah. too. Because you got to think, like, if he goes down for this shit, there's no more Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. There's no more Brilliant Idiots. It's, like, yeah. a lot of people lose their fucking jobs if Charlamagne Both goes down. Them. And that's why I think he's so protected and nobody's saying anything. Yeah. Which is, like, it's you know... Their, it's too much. Which is right. what we it's saw with Bill him. Cosby shit. Like, hindsight scale. is twenty yeah. twenty. Yeah, like, it's the same thing. Like, you know, where networks was covering it up and nobody was saying shit, even though these women were coming forward years ago. Nobody was saying anything because he was so big. You get to see it with the Charlemagne shit. And I think that's crazy. It was scary to me, like, watching nobody say anything before TMZ released the, the response to the accusation. And that's crazy because y- y- y'all can be on his side. But, to, like, like Angel, I mean, the issue with Angel Rod is just devoutly just being on his side. So, whatever. But for people not even acknowledge like it, Amanda Sills, like it didn't happen. Bitch, you bitches got opinions about every motherfucking thing mm-hmm. except your friend Charlemagne being a rapist. Mm-hmm. You can say I don't believe. Or this even shit. even if you didn't believe that he was a rapist, at least acknowledge that there are inconsistencies in the stories that mm-hmm. he told and what was in his book and what he said in the academics interview. Mm-hmm. That's like the one thing that like I was just like, you're a fucking liar. Like you really lied about this shit. Because it don't even make sense statistically. Like when he said, Oh, I his wasn't I wasn't old enough to drink when it was like, bottom. nigga, you was twenty two. You was turning twenty two. Mm-hmm. So it's like you really created that whole lie to like get ahead of the story and PR. That's called getting for ahead years, of the curve. For years, like for years, like, laying the foundation. They got caught up in your own story. Yeah, like you. And then he uttered these same sentiments. Like if you use your own truth, nobody else could use it against yeah. you. When it's just like okay, still so this, valid too. <laughs> this is what you've been doing. Exactly, it works. Right, That's Jay. why people, when people bring this shit up, the first thing they say is, "Oh, well, he already he told talked the story. about this in his yeah. book." Like. He already talked about it, but they're not talking about like okay, there was inconsistencies. That was the plan. That's why he did it. Like yeah. that could have been why he did it. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Um, but on that note as well, because Tyree, I feel like like I said, you looked up the tweets before and shit like that. We talking about Charlemagne, who got the shit dug up and says, "Have you ever been toxic, sir?" Me? Or have you always been like elevated? Hell no! Like, I had my very very toxic moments. I was I was like like searching myself on Twitter with like some like. Very like hot topic. You didn't delete some stuff? No, oh, I deleted a lot of shit. But like, I remember, I know we all talk about we gonna talk about the fat camp because that was a funny conversation. Oh, when I was the fat camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> my family, my family was toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I think all black families. But it's toxic. like it ain't black when they're toxic. Like. Right. I don't, I don't think like anybody has not had a toxic moment. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I think it's impossible. All right, so you got to preface the conversation with my I don't think anybody is different like, than anybody else's. <laughs> everybody had a glimpse I'm of toxicity. Myself, Sorry. I'm saying for myself, like, I feel like everybody's had a toxic moment. Some of us more intense than others or more controversial than why you, others. Why are you looking at me? Why are you pointing at me? Because <laughs> you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> but, like. You need to gaze in your white people. Like, that's why he's pointing at you. <laughs> Lena will fuck you up. That's why I'm gonna get you. I mean, like, yeah, I've had some controversial moments. I feel like they kind of live and die really fast. You would die if you were the white woman home. That's why he's pointing at you. Like, but my feelings are tied to this day. Yeah, to this day. <laughs> But can you, can you like reminisce on maybe like a toxic moment or a toxic narrative? For me or my family? No, you, nigga. Oh, me family. personally. Um, I'm trying to like tap that. I don't, I don't know oh. specifically. Um, <laughs> damn. I can't think of exactly a moment, maybe. I don't know. But I know I've, I've had some moments. Like, I've, I found some Tuesday. I was like saying like the word dyke a lot. Like, in a day. That shit funny still. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, word dyke is funny. I said it a lot back in the day. I said, that was one tweet too you found. I said, just turn dyke or. Yeah, you would like just be a dyke or something. <laughs> or, like, if dudes hurt you so much, something like just be a dyke. It's just like, you what? It was some wisdom in that, though. No, there's no wisdom in that. There's <laughs> zero wisdom in that tweet. Okay, but, oh, let's talk about your fat camp. What happened with your fat camp pass? When I went to fat camp? Yeah. <laughs> that shit funny. Is that funny? Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> That's not 
funny. That's it's funny. hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. Actually, y'all have money, money. They send you away just to lose the weight. I ain't even gonna run around. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm just thinking about like little fat kids like trying to train. But it was it was a matter. Y'all never saw heavyweights, right? No. no. Ain't my it was a matter of like just getting healthy habits, like being used to being active, being used. But I mean, I was already used to those things. I just was fat, like. <laughs> and even the name Fat Camp, it's like. They didn't call it Fat Camp, but it was a camp that like organized like sections. So like the first like month would be like all fat kids, and then the second month would be like you know kids with like whatever disorder, whatever. But it was just like a matter of like section it off. So they, they didn't call it fat camp. It was like William Penn camp, but it was a fat camp. They, gave, they only gave you, like you had to drink, you had to drink like two liters of water. Like you had to drink this amount of water a day. Or what, like, what happened? You Did lost you like snacks away? yeah, like you would lose your access to like certain activities. Like you couldn't do certain activities if you didn't like drink this water. Like all of our food was like really. <laughs> this one boy cried. Like he, cried. <laughs> he was in the same cabin, and we was like walking up this I hill, cried if I had and too. he like fell on his knees and started crying. <laughs> <It's too much. laughs> yeah, he was like, I just want to go home. I was like, <laughs> And I was like, not scared, but I'm just like, just get up. Like, why she like, just get up? He was like, no, they call my mom, I'm going home. Like, I'm going home. Like, this is my breaking snacks. point. Like, A boy did it. sneak snacks in. It wasn't like, what was that movie? Is that the movie Heavyweights? Yeah. Where they were like, hiding snacks in yeah. the bed. He it didn't hide it. it, they found it before he unpacked. Mm. He had a duffel bag with like cotton candy, hot oh, Cheetos, gosh. like right. random shit. That's crazy. And they was like, yo, you you serious? He like, my mom's like, oh, bring this shit. Like, I remember. Like, she did not say you could bring my yeah, <laughs> That's the last thing she said you could bring, nigga. Like. Nigga, she told you to pick your drawers. Like, <laughs> not a Kit Kat. Cheetos and cotton candy. Like, that's um, crazy. Oh, no, but they had put it in like, this little storage room. I remember the kids, like, sneaking in there to get. Like, he packed so much snacks. The like, kids would sneak in there. That's crazy. And get shit out of his snack bag. If he kills family, you don't do a fat kid? Nah, I wouldn't. Why? You don't have to. I, you don't have to. Like, I can I can be proactive with my kids to make sure their diet is right, their activity level is right. I feel like my parents are being lazy. Would you make Would you make your kids a magnet be vegetarian? Would I make them? Okay. No. Huh? So like you would. So I guess when they're growing asking? up, you would naturally just give them only veg- vegetables. Yeah. If you choose, if my kid is like fourteen. And he walk home from school. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, like, if you're like, walk home. Story. He's gonna be 4 14 and he don't want a fucking you can't burger. Eat me you 14. Like, <laughs> he gonna be 7 years old. He gonna be 4. Nigga, no. the worst taste of a like, burger. That nigga gonna no. wild the fuck out. Like, don't like, get a chicken wing. Oh, like, if you decide. Right, he gonna get like 300 pounds in a year. Imagine your first chicken wing. Like, At 13. Woo. Or your first bag of chips. Oh, like, man. I'm not gonna purchase <laughs> your first herbs? meat or processed food like I don't do now. I'm not gonna purchase it for my household. They can eat outside. But if you if you at your aunt's house they and she fries some chicken and you want a piece of chicken, then eat it. Okay. It's that's your freedom. It's just like in my household, this is how we eat. Now if you if you choose to eat chicken at your aunt's house, you go out to dinner, order a steak. That's if we had dinner as a family and you order a steak. They order a fucking steak. I don't give a fuck. But if pay for it? Yeah, if we're at dinner as a family, then yeah. yeah. I don't think it's like it's not like I'm not gonna purchase it. Yeah. I'm not, not buying for shit, nigga. I'm not paying for your tuition, and if you don't go to the college, I want you to go to. Yeah, it's like, like it's not but in my house, I'm not purchasing it, like and I'm not buying it for my kids to cook. Like, if you want it, you have to go outside of this household to get it. You know I have I mean? a policy in place as well that I'm still for my household. I'm an addict, jumping to addict. So I know that I'm not gonna buy. I still, I still don't buy no big, big family size bag of chips in my crib, or whatever. I know my kids will buy none of that. If you want some chips, you gotta buy it yourself, and that's gonna be that. Don't bring it in this house. Oh, they can't bring it in the house. You gotta eat them right away. Yeah, I see they can't them. eat them in store. They cannot eat half bag in store. I'm gonna eat them probably. Uh, I don't have any crazy but my thing is just like I'm not gonna prepare it. Chips, That's my whole I thing. I just won't prepare it. I'm just not preparing it. Everything is okay in moderation. Like that's gonna be my rule. Don't overindulge. But what's moderation? Because once a week is is a part of your diet. That's not moderation. Like you know, moderately do it moderately, not too much or not too little. Because if you say like I'm eating pizza in moderation and pizza once a week, that's now not really moderation. Yeah, but eating pizza in moderation and eating like broccoli in moderation might be two different things. So it's all 
based on Situation. the individual. Yeah, yeah. Like, have like whatever the food is. <laughs> oh, like I think pork is okay in moderation. Really? But moderation. <laughs> yeah, like but moderation. I just meat be, pork. <laughs> yeah, because it, it just seems like people. Meat kids want to eat it in my house. <laughs> no, like, it just it just, it just seems like people <laughs> act what? like pork is just so much worse than beef. I hate so that much too. dirtier than chicken. Holy than valid like, ass pork. Not when pork it's just like, when the pig like, is the cleanest oh. animal on the farm. So. Chicken is filthy, nigga. But, you and eat that, and chicken, but not thing. pork. Like, like, and that's the thing, like you know, and even we know, like pork is more, or chicken is more well received than like pork. But it's just and like it's okay in feces. moderation. Like you can have a pork chop once every two, you know, twice chicken. a year. Pork is just not good for your body. You can have a pork fat. rib, like yeah. you know, twice a year, three times a year. Like it's not like isn't beef harder to digest more? Anxious? And that's the thing is too. It? Yeah, it is. So it's just like you know, be so. I hate my pork eaters. Yeah, no, but like, like pork is pork is like pork is just heavy in fat, and if you if you're eating anything, that's why I think it's okay. If you're eating moderation. anything saturated in fat, is bad for your heart, your arteries, and that can come there. That, that's even plant based products. Like a lot of people don't even realize that like eating that's coconut oil every day is the same as eating a piece of pork bacon every day. Don't eat it every. It's it's an extremely saturated. But fat. society will say like you know they'll look down on like pork eaters yeah, before like, they look like people look down on people that use coconut oil. It's just like you're eating coconut oil every single day. You eat coconut. Oil? I mean, you when you cook with it, food. yeah, it's just you like, it. it's like a butter, stuff. like, I use it as a butter substitute. It's heavy. So you're saying you use a coconut oil every day is like, wow. It's the same as eating butter or frying bacon, bacon it's every like, day. Yeah, but it's people like, act like it's so, it's so much worse than, like, eating a piece It's just of high in, in fat, and it depends on, like, it's, it's a lot, like it's a lot that goes into it. Like, if you're an extremely, act, I mean, all, obviously, activity levels, all that shit plays yeah. a part in your fat consumption, but... Somebody that's like active right there and running and working out and eating pork is not going to affect them as somebody as uh, somebody that's stagnant that doesn't work right. out and they eat pork. It's going to affect you on two totally different and ways. And plus it's just like, yo, a piece of pork bacon is not going to clog your fucking arteries. Right. But it's if when you're you make eating, it every if you're day. eating multiple bacon sandwiches every fucking day, that's when, you know, you'll run into a problem. With the pork chops in the weekend. Just like, right. Just like if you're eating steak every day or if you're eating greasy chicken Fried every chicken. day, anything is like too bad for you. Like every I read day, an article about this woman drowning smart. herself because she did like a water drinking mm-hmm. contest I heard that, yeah. she for Xbox or some dumb shit. She had like a water poisoning because you know so your water level can get too high. And you can like saturate and like yeah. it's a bunch of cells and shit. It's just like too much of anything is bad for you. How much is the word? I think I could do it. She I mean, did, like, I don't know, she but like she did gallons. it when the Xbox. Yeah, I knew you about it. It was a while ago. Like, she it died. Was a, it was did like she die? Really so did she get the Xbox before she died? She won the contest, right, but she died. So it's like, sure. yeah, but they lost their mother and got an Xbox. They got a dad. That's intense. Would y'all, uh, how you feel about beating kids? I know we talk about that as well. I mean, y'all have extremely different views than I do <laughs> on the abuse of children. Oh, but, no, I um, I don't, I don't. In my, this, I'm, I'm gonna say it once. You know what I mean? To me, it's not really a debate. But mm-hmm. like, I just believe that if your child is old enough to comprehend, then you can have a real conversation with them. What's and, old enough? Any age. Like, I feel like oh, if you okay. can recognize that your child is can comprehend then you can have a conversation with them and you can do things, you can do punishment as well as like taking things away, certain privileges, because they can comprehend why this is happening. If your child is not old enough to comprehend, then they're probably not old enough to realize why they're getting hit. So it's more of a thing, as as you as a parent, taking precautions to make sure they're not doing things that are doing to put themselves in danger. Like I'm about to pop my two-year-old because they touched the stove. And it's like, I get that you want to associate pain with the stove, but it's my job as a parent to make sure that you, as a two-year-old, are not in the way of danger. Now, if you're old enough to comprehend, I can talk to you and we can communicate why you should and shouldn't do certain things. And if you do it again, then obviously those life lessons of you getting hurt, you're going to realize because you can comprehend. Do you believe talking but, doesn't solve things at times? No. Yeah, absolutely. I, so then what? At that point, I think it's just like the parents, like really. Punishment. I mean, yeah, you can be on punishment or it's a matter of just like, <laughs> it, punishment is a thing. But I feel like physically hitting my child isn't a thing. Like, that's not, that will never be a thing for me. And for me, it's the opposite. Like, I feel like if they're old enough to understand and comprehend why they shouldn't touch the stove and you touch the stove anyway, then I'm going to pop you. I Like, you're going to get your ass beat because what if you touch the stove and, like, you really burn yourself? Like, I'd rather you learn your lesson by me beating your ass or, like, popping you or something than for you to get burnt. 
mm-hmm. I think it's different. Like you, you really shouldn't be kids when they're not really old enough to comprehend or yeah. understand. Like a six month old, a one year old, two year old, Being a six month year old is a problem. Yeah, people like do it though, and I feel like that's why I feel like but I'm not I do say, think that's what I'm saying. Like there are the super gosh, duper extreme views. No, I'm oh, talking about oh, the, the normal stuff. shit, the the shit that I was raised with. Like I never got. But I think it's also is a difference between like heard. popping your kid and beating your. But kid. But even beating with you know a belt, I mean? like I never got my ass whipped for something that I didn't deserve. Like, it was never, my mom wasn't punching me in my face. She wasn't kicking me in my chest. Like, she wasn't throwing me around the fucking Square up, room. bitch. She wasn't dicking my shit. Like, she wasn't doing the shit that, like, people, parents who really were abusing them, them yeah. was doing. So, but that's, why like, I don't have, me that's why I don't have extreme abuse. views on uh, kids getting their ass. So, how do you feel about, like, let's say you do something that your husband doesn't agree with and he just smack you and by you shouldn't have did it? Yeah. I'm a grown ass woman. Like right. I know, I know. But your right reason why you say you're grown no, it is because you can comprehend. No, 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 no. The reason why a nigga better not smack me is because I'm a grown ass woman. Right. I, you don't. It's not your job to teach me what's right and wrong. You didn't have me. I'm not your fucking right. child. That's the difference. But if your child does something that you don't like, is it your right? It's to not about them. them. It's not about them doing something that I don't like. It's about them doing something that they don't got no business doing, like touching. And if I told you already. And if I told. But a lot of times, parents is not a precaution. Like if your kid is doing something. I can't relate to that because my mom always told me like everything that I got my ass whipped for, I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing it. When I got caught in school with a porn magazine, when I got fucking, when I wrote bitch and ass all over my fucking. Walls. I knew they were curse words. I mean, we obviously like, all had different upbringings. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm I was not bringing it. porn magazines to school. I was not writing bitch and asshole in books. I was going like, a lot. Anytime, like the times that I like, my mom did hit me, but it was never like to touch the she stove. never took up a belt and beat me. It was like she was punching my arm. I got so punched she in the abused face. You? See, that's abuse. Like, Getting punched in your face is. I call my mom a bitch, and she punched me in my face, and I kind of feel like I deserve to get punched in face. Yeah, like that's it my, was. That's my. Point. I will never fault her for punching. It was just like when I looked, at, I was like, yo, I'm surprised she ain't like really fucked me up. It was just like she was like, what? And I was yeah. like, oh shit! And like, see, and, that, and it was like, just like, oh, right. I yeah, like that's like a lesson learned. It really was a lesson learned. I feel like your views are super extreme in the sense that it seems like you're saying, oh, well, there's never a reason to hit a kid, or there's never a reason to hit your child. When it's just like, no, that's bullshit. There are reasons. Like you call me a mama bitch. But I also like, think that I also, I also think that. Like, so you think she should have not hit you in that moment? I think that I can understand why she hit me, but I also feel like there are reasons. There are ways that it could have been addressed. Otherwise, I mean, knowing my mother, there was no other way for her but to punch me. But I get it. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not like. I'm that's what I'm saying. It's, it's me personally. It's my. Were you? At the time, maybe like nine. I would have got my like ass whipped with a belt. Yeah. My mom never punched me. Punch a nine year old. Yeah, yeah like, it was. Like, it was a dead punch in the face. Like in the it was a dead like, punch. My mom punched me in the stomach one time. It was I still a dead punch. That shit. I had a black eye. I was like, I was like 13, 14 though, and I, was, I said something slick, whatever. I never got punched in my face. I ain't never just looked at her though. Like I was like, that's crazy. I've never called her out her name since. It works. Yeah, and I be feeling like, like I actually like, like most of the sentiment you said. I feel I I'm not against it. Yeah. My thing is just like I don't think it should be your first right, go to. Right, right. And, that's cool. and a lot of people is the, that's their first yeah. go to. Like you don't listen, smack. Like not like I want to explain to you why. Uh, if you disobey again, yeah, yeah. then it's another repercussion. And I, and I feel I a lot of people that. generally are just speaking from. Legit abuse past lives. Yeah. And, and some people normalize it. They like, normalize it. Yo, my mom really stomped the shit out of me every I'm Sunday. I'm going to stop my kids. So, oh, y'all beating your kids. I'm never going to hit my kids. Yeah. Like, that's what Which they be like. Like, like. If they got abused, they, and a I, lot of people, they never, like, they're not going to hit their kids because they got, got abused. And they, and, but my but thing is, my like, I can understand that. But my views are different because I wasn't getting abused. abused. I never got abused. I was, I was always loved. I never got my mom didn't like me. I mean, there is a, there is a huge difference in chastising your child and abusing your child and I don't want people to confuse like emotionally physically verbally, yeah, so like, that's what we agree like yeah, there like, is a difference I just said like my for me to physically hit my child you would have to be like extremely like pressing my buttons time like, at the time at the, right and time and time <laughs> and time, time again how many times gotta call you a bitch for them to get hit 
I feel like I can be I a feel very, like I feel like I can be a very vindictive person. To your kid? Extremely to my See, kids. I'd rather you just whip my ass so, and I hold it over my fucking head like I'm a bitch off the street that you got a, a failed business venture with. Like, exactly. And that to me as a parent, I feel like that's how I would just like my kid I feel like I would just utilize like real life scenarios, like, yo, alright. I'm a bitch, I'm a nigga, whatever you want to call me, great, amazing. All right, I hope you have money to pay your rent. Get out of my house. But like, it's just like for me. So you're gonna kick someone out before you hit them. Yeah. See, and that's a lot more extreme. That's interesting. Than, like, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Because yeah. I rather like. I know people say there's no reason to ever kick a kid out. I think I don't agree with that either. Though. Yeah, I don't. There's agree with plenty of reasons to kick a nigga out. Yeah. Like. You I mean, obviously, I'm not kicking my eight year old out of the house, but it's just like yeah. I feel like I can, eight year old do. I can make you suffer a lot yeah. more, like by and not hit you. Like one time, my nephew, I don't know what the hell he said. What I said, brother, dude. I don't know what he said. I don't, he don't remember. Cry. He don't I don't know. He did something to my brother, I don't and you. my brother made him get out of the car and walk home. Oh, Isaiah, no. Absolutely. I, hey, Isaiah. Maybe it's like the mother instinct in me, but that is insane. Like, Isaiah cried. Was it dark? I, no, it wasn't. It was like after school. He's like two blocks from the house. It wasn't like extreme, but it was like Isaiah. I did it every day in my life. <laughs> that was normal. Right? <laughs> Isaiah was like, he made me walk home. I was like, damn. But then I'm also the kind of person who just like, I kind of throw it back on the kid. Like, well, what did you, what you do? do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, well, I said X, Y, and Z. He's like, with my kids. I'm like, okay, well, that's why he made you get out of the car out. and walk home. I can see that. I can see me kicking my teenager out. Right. No, I mean, I was going to walk at home type thing. I can see me doing that. Yeah. I feel like that's a regular dad thing. Like, all right, get out of my car then, nigga. I'm like, walk home. Yeah. I'm not yeah, making you walk like six two miles. blocks. Yeah. yeah. Especially, Especially like, wait till we get home, I'm going to whip Because you know your kid's head. boundaries. Like, if your kid is used to getting kids True. door to door, right. two blocks is hell to them. Oh. Right. You know your kid's boundaries. You know, you know your kid's, like, buttons and boundaries. Like, you know your kid. You know what I mean? Like, I know taking Isaiah. Yeah, my mom knew that was not. <laughs> I know taking Isaiah act like it's not going to kill him if I cut the internet off. <laughs> like, I know it's just like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the internet is off. Yeah, <laughs> I can't watch Xbox Live. I can't do X, Y, Z. No, go to sleep. Um, but like, just taking it, he gonna find something else to do. Cause it's like, okay, but I don't have it. I was happy when I first got on uh, Punishment, and it was September 11, 2001, when the I never got on Punishment, y'all. That was the first time I ever got on. But I was like, for real. Cause like usually I just get my ass whipped and they just be the. And that's not. But every kid is different. I, I prefer to like get my ass beat. Lean's like, I go read. I'm like, I gotta read. <laughs> I gotta read. What? I gotta read, mom. I hate this house. I'll be sick. This is like, then hours later, she's like, tell me what you read. Summarize the chapter. I'll be like, you she expected she me to read? Like, she made you do a, a book summer, report. Like, book report. Like, I, was, she, I, I went there. 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 I went Read like the ghetto novels with like the sex scenes. That's what happened to her. She said it used to happen to her, but she was happy. Like, oh, read. I'm like, nigga, I am not happy. But um, moving on. Yeah, I used to love it. About your grannies that never got beat. Our grandma. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was another thing a long time ago. Y'all thought was just so yeah, that ridiculous. Shit was funny. You, no, we didn't think it was ridiculous. It was just funny how you was just, you just like everybody's grandma got yeah. beat. And it's like yeah, it was. I guess you would consider it like the social norm. But we just because, didn't see it that way. Because it wasn't because our y'all too. Grand not just us. It's like not just us. Like, it was just y'all too. Women in my family, period. It was just y'all five. It's just my it great grandmother carried a oh, pistol. Oh, great, the great grand. Yeah, like it wasn't nobody beating on one time Dorothy. Like at all. You my <laughs> grand. Her nickname was one time because you literally like the hood knew her. You had one time to disrespect her, man, woman, child, whoever. You were being kept. Period. Yeah. One of her baby dads, like, said some wild shit in the bar. She had him jump. The only reason they didn't kill him because the baby was like, don't kill my dad. It wasn't no cameras around. Wasn't like no, that. I'm not, it's it no apologies. Like, you call me a bitch, good. All nine of my brothers are going to beat your ass. Right. Period. So I, I get what you're saying, but, like, for me and my, it wasn't my reality. Like, the women in my family weren't just getting beat. So, like, when you said it, it was like, wait, no, everybody, everybody grandma, grandma don't get beat. At like, all. all right. So, since pain, you know, I love percentages. Oh my god. Fake percentages though. Q don't even pull Fake up news. Q don't even pull up he real don't even do statistics. He about to answer, so what do you think the Q will be like, so, so that your grandma's got beat. He'd be like, so about 15% your grandma's got beat. 
Q, what what Where sense do you is? Where you get that? Like? <laughs> nah, he didn't even do a simple Google search. <laughs> I saw fences. Like, right. so, I saw one movie, and I'm assuming that 15% of all women. I saw several no, movies. But, but just to piggyback off this conversation, I was in a hair salon the other day, and we were talking. Like, the conversation, the theme was like perspective. Because growing up, we were talking about Christmas and Santa Claus and all this other shit. And um, growing up, the norm for me was a black Santa Claus. Mm. Like, until I stopped believing in Santa Claus, I thought That's that you know. it was why, why so we believe in Santa that Claus. Santa Claus was black. That's not, we can get to that conversation, but the point I'm making was that I thought that everybody, else think it's white. everybody, yeah, like I was the minority, but I thought that everybody else, like I thought everybody knew Santa Claus was black. I thought everybody knew Jesus was black. Because the church that I grew up in, he was black. Same for Santa Claus. So then look, my hairstylist goes, so you never took like pictures with Santa Claus in the mall and all this other shit? Yeah. I showed her. I'm like, I only did black Santa suit though. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, he, he was black in my picture. So my cousin, she posted a picture of like her as a kid. He was black. And then like my other cousin posted another picture like, you know, of them as kids with Santa Claus. He was fucking black. So like, that's what was like growing up and like finally not that's believing in Santa Claus no more. I think it was probably like seven or eight or something mm-hmm. like that. It was really like a culture shock. That's nice. Like I feel like I knew you was white on because I knew you was white. Yeah, like my mom and my grandma, they went out their way. It was like a thing like, I know somebody sent me a white Santa Claus car. Like it was like a thing. <laughs> like They'd be offended. So it was a thing. We gonna go out our way to find a black Santa down and show him all the show. And that's like, that's like, that's I've awesome. seen white Santas, yeah. but I, that just wasn't. You thought they was the, the rare ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, because I was so sheltered. Like, and we was talking about like you know how much you don't know. How much like growing up, you realize you don't know as much. Like you realize you don't know what you don't know mm-hmm. until you like figure it out. And I was telling her, like, you know, with me being a phone sex operator, it was a lot of, like, white shit that I didn't know about. I never knew Santa existed. Like, I, I never knew it was a real thing. What? Santa Claus. But I also grew up with, like, very religious grandparents. So, for us, like, was Christmas like Jesus? was, like, Jesus is the reason for the season. It wasn't, like, like, Santa Claus was always, like, in my household, it was, like, it's a cute story, but it's not, it's not, it's not reality. Like, it's not a real person. Like, Oh, it's like a, it's like listening to like you know the three little pigs. Like it was like a story. It wasn't like a real thing. Yeah, Lena did it, but it wasn't like a long thing. It was like whatever. But about your sex worker thing. About your sex let's talk worker. about men being fucking creeps. Men are and women capitalize on. You got some got some stories about how men are just fucking weirdos and creeps. Just like one of my cousins, like her. She looked irked. So I was like, this I girl, know why so so when I was dancing the beat, this I'm on. Love it. I love her. So like we like I thought Santa Claus was black all my life. And that's realistic. I mean, we only had black paintings of people in our, like, we had black Jesus in our house. You put the black painting. angel on top of the tree. Yeah, that's what, like, that's what I, the, the black angel on top of the tree. Like, we, my grandma had, like, little, like, porcelain black angels and she was, like, like they were ornaments. Like, everything was, like, like, nothing about Caucasian, like, culture was, like, it wasn't a glorified thing. in like, the household. Even, house. even yeah. the, the mobster and Italian movies and stuff like that, for we whatever reason, those. my pop-pop, like, he wasn't into that shit. My uncles and stuff, they wasn't into, like, white mob and, like, they was looking at, like, Frank yeah, Lucas yeah. and, like, black, you know, black, black exploitation and shit. Gang, yeah, like, black stuff, like, the super flies and all that other stuff. That it wasn't, it wasn't, like, no, like, to this day, I still haven't seen Scarface. To this day. Still haven't seen, still That's haven't seen wild, Scarface, though. still haven't seen, like, The Godfathers yeah. in its entirety, like, any, and I I don't care to see it. Any of them either. Pretty, pretty, pretty good movie. I, can, I can get why people did, obviously, because of you know American stories. I mean, but, I, even I couldn't like growing up because it's just like they don't even like white. They don't even like black people, so it's we like I don't like it. the whole you know Italian vibe thing. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. Like I don't even, I can't even get into it because it's like it don't relate to me. It don't relate. And to get into your question, like about me being a phone sex operator, it's like I had to learn about a lot of white shit yeah. to. Nice. To prepare shot, for these characters. Shot. Shot. Shot? Oh, shot. Sure. Right, cool. Keep talking, Miss. I had to, like, like, I had to go through every season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I love them. To figure out. They are so hilarious. To figure out what they like, what they do. Like, you know, things that are not native to our culture. You don't find them funny? 
they're they're entertaining. Like I can see how people talk about her. Like I just think they're funny because like I just I mean I think I, the things that they I do, think that I find them funny not for the reason why white America finds them entertaining. Your life that makes sense. There you go. Like That's I'm more so laughing like, at them than with and them. And I don't even feel like it's like laughing at you like man in the boo boo. It's more so like <laughs> like this is ridiculous. Like you keep memories of your ex in the box. And yeah, like weird shit. Like, I'm laughing at it. Like that's really that's. But certain stuff like that is what helps me with these, develop these different characters because up until me doing this, all I knew about was black stuff. Like if you asked me about black movies, I could like run them down run down the list, but if you start talking about asking me the names like white actors and stuff, they all look the same. Unless it's what? like Leonardo DiCaprio or Angelina Jolie. I know who George Clooney is. I mean, because he's such a Unless huge... Unless they're heavy. Yeah, like, you're I, a heavy artist. Like, I don't know Hardy who possibly. was Catherine Zeta-Jones. I wouldn't be able to like recognize Throw a her face, face immediately. Yeah, yeah, like I wouldn't... Yeah. I wouldn't be... Like if you throw like some a, names... Like a lot of their names I, are bigger James than their faces. I don't know who that is. I know who that is, but that's only because of that series on Hulu about JFK assassination. Okay. But I could just say no. Who else? Yeah. Another white person? <laughs> no, like, uh, all right, so like a white actress. Actress? Okay. Uh, Renee Zellweger? I don't know I don't who know that, that is. is. Wow. Oh, no, I do. She got a funny looking face, though. I don't know who that you is. You know Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. But I can't picture friends. her face. From yeah, Friends, right? Though. Oh, yeah. Now I now I can picture it from, yeah, but. I got you. Um, what are some words that you've seen or heard on there? Or maybe you've learned as well besides what you just said? Um, what I've you always t- when I say men are just fucking creepy and weird and freaks, you also be like, no, oh, if you just have your fetish and your kinks and shit like that. No, but it's still weird. It's still like weird. it's still weird to me because it's not something that I'm into. Like one of the common questions that I get is, oh, well, do you get turned on when you take on these calls? And it's like, no. I would never. Think like I've probably actually. taken <laughs> like over 800 calls and I probably only got turned on once, and that was because he had an accent, mm. not even necessary. What kind of Spanish? It was British. Why the fuck in British accents? Fuck out of here, Idris. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was British, but um, yeah. Was like, he a super creep though, or freak? No, he was a couple. That was like That's his fetish. Very different. He had fantasies about watching his wife get fucked by another man. And generally, they're like black men, because you know right, the, right, right, right. The, the the rumor is that black men are hung and you know That's stuff like that. That's fucking disgusting. But I didn't know. The funny thing about it is I didn't know that that was his fantasy because I hadn't taken, like, you know, the training on phone sex and, like, different fetishes and stuff like that. But hindsight is twenty twenty, Because, like, once I took the training, I was able to recognize, like, oh, shit, that, that was his fetish. I certain things he said. Cause, yeah, because the people will call you, and they don't call you, and you hear the operator say, this person has mm-hmm. this fetish. Or they call you and say, I have this fetish. You kind of have to talk to them and, like take pieces of their conversation and put it together like one of the first things the guy said to me when um when we were on the phone was that i I think my girlfriend is cheating on me like she always she's always at the gym and she always wears these tight pants and she's always with her trainer so at the time i didn't know that this was like a fantasy so like naturally Mm. you say oh well i'm sure she's not cheating on me (laughs) But she he just being a woman, be, he but wants he her. wants her to be cheating. So, wow. like, it turns on one of the ways that, like, I could have made more money on the call, I made, like, 30 bucks. It lasted. Mm-hmm. That was, like, one of my first calls, too. It lasted, like, 30 yeah, minutes. This bitch don't know what I'm like. I mean, no. Like, he, he had to be somewhat into it. Maybe I had a sexy voice or something. And also, like, this was my regular voice. Like, right. it was slower and deeper and stuff. But Slower and deeper. But, um, hey. but yeah, like, he, I wouldn't have known... That that was his fantasy. Had I not taken the phone sex training course, now when I took it, and I knew that like that's one of the things that they say, they assume that their wife is cheating on them to add to the fantasy. It was just like okay, now I know how to sell time. Like I kept them on the phone for thirty minutes, but had I knew that this was his thing, I could have kept them on the phone for an hour. What's your longest call so far? Um, five hours and thirteen minutes. But but I wasn't talking at all. I was probably only talking like an hour and a half, two hours, mm-hmm. and then we fell asleep. Okay. So your longest talking is hours? No, talking was probably like three hours. And what was it about? Um, he's a regular, so he was just talking to me about life. How can he? Okay, whatever. He so was just... like, um, the the regulars. Most of my regulars are what we categorize as lonely callers. 
mm-hmm. these are the people that that you really want to talk to because they're not on the phone to get a quick cut. They on the phone because they really need somebody to talk to. Yeah. So it's like, it, and it's cheaper than therapy. Paying you kill one or two ninety nine a minute. <laughs> I mean, I haven't gotten anybody that was suicidal, but you have I have. Protocol for that. I feel like they're gonna no. kill themselves or rape somebody. That's like no, but I have mm-hmm. gotten a caller who rape fantasy is a thing though. Yeah, I I I have gotten a caller whose mom was dying allegedly. Allegedly. And you know who he hates his coworkers out. allegedly, but all of this stuff could be a lie. Just like a lot of my callers think I'm white. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know I don't take any of this shit home. Like once I get off the phone, I'm off the phone. I don't think about this shit. Um, moving on. So in this this age of like digital media and shit like that, whatever. Do y'all be thinking about like how there's a such thing as oversaturation? I feel like there's so many people doing so many different things. So you feel like so I so I be thinking like if you have a passion for something, you feel there's an opportunity for you to actually go to something, you should do it. Or it's also like well, there's a lot of people doing it at this time, so maybe I shouldn't do it for instance. Like, let's say podcast for instance. Or I see also just me just observing things. I see a lot of girls are doing like lashes now. I be like. How many bitches can do lashes? Um, so what, what are your thoughts on that? Jeremy? I think that it's a matter of like how you view it. So it, it for me is more how so. You market it. Yeah, that's like is yeah. It's, for me, it's like everybody makes a white t shirt. Haynes, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Nike. Guess. Guess everybody. Everybody makes a white t shirt. But it like she said, it, like Penny said, it's, it's your marketing. So it's not about like what's been done. It's about how are you going to do it differently. Cause it's a lot of bitches they do and sell here too. Yeah, it's a lot of so I think, in the world. There are a lot of yeah. In the world. It's not oversaturation. I think that people kind of get hung up on that, like that narrative when they're not doing well. Mm-hmm. I think that it's a matter of like your ability to carry out that field and that talent well. It's not oversaturation. Oversaturation in my mind is a personal thing. Like, and hmm. my oversaturating my audience with too much content where they're not able to like. Where it's too much for them to keep up with, or am I giving them too much? Like that's how I am. Am I giving too much of myself? Yeah, that to me that's oversaturation. Not a matter of like actual career field, because everything's I, been done before. There's but, no original idea. But I think there there can be like a such thing as like oversaturation in like a general sense too. Just because I feel like there's an oversaturation of music out now, where it's just like it's too much for people to keep up with. Like, it's, granted, there's enough for you to focus on what you actually like. But it's just like, if you like different kinds of music, it's like, I have to pay attention to this person's album. I had to and like five, six it is albums. A, it has been a lot of years. Like, so I definitely think there is a such, like it's not, it can be generalized too, but I do see what you're saying. Like yeah. spreading yourself thin, I do think. That's how I've used over generation, is spreading yourself too thin or giving too much of yourself to one particular audience. I don't view mm-hmm. oversaturation as like, a particular feel like because i kind of feel like everything's been done before like there's at this very moment in time there's no original field of career you know well, what I mean? over saturation like, and originality not the same thing yeah but a lot of people look at it that way like oh it's it's two people selling here it's two people doing podcasts like and i think it's like no like just do it differently yeah. create a new topic market it differently like mm-hmm. every everything's been done before but how are you going to make it original <laughs> And I think that's what people for your lack audience. creativity. For your audience, right. That's yeah. a complaint that they have that is old school sort of situation because they lack creativity. And, that, and that's a different argument, I feel like, than just oversaturation. It's like you're lacking creativity. It's not really oversaturation. It's just like you're just copying someone else or you're not original like in your content that you're producing. Because I feel like people going to choose either way. It's yeah. all about like selling. Yeah, it's like marketing. Said, like, it's all marketing. You, the, you're the one that has to do the convincing. People buy People into buy into you regardless what, regardless what you're doing, whether it's music, if hair, they like you, sex, they don't buy whatever you sell. skincare, podcasts. Like, if they like you, they're buying into what you're selling. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on uh, creative droughts? And because I like just your oh, timing... Okay. And just they personal creative droughts in general. Pressure of <laughs> trying to deliver. Like in general. It, we could talk about a million things. Right. How right. the fuck should be your mind? Like, well, I feel I'm, that I'm, was, I'm, it was I'm, connected to the whole oversaturation. I'm gonna tune it into personal creative droughts because I kind of feel like me personally, I run into droughts like creatively <laughs> in a sense of like I don't know what to push out sometimes. Like I don't know. If I should be working on a particular project more, if I should be networking more, if I should be pushing out a product or a service or whatever, 
like I hit droughts in the sense of like I get stuck. Like I feel like it's too many ideas and it turns into a drought of what's produced. Mm. Not a drought of ideas or creativity, but more so a drought of like what can I focus on and actually produce and give an audience? Oh my God, yes. Not more so like, oh, I don't know what to do next. But I know what to do actual next. Creativity. It's the, extra creativity that what I'm creating. Just to piggyback off what you were saying, the creativity is not the problem. Right, right, right. And honestly, for me personally, the, the only time I really have creative droughts is when I'm not having sex. Nice. Right. So it's like like that, that shit inspi- or or if I'm not <laughs> or if I'm not like inspired by love My or legit or might romance be the opposite. in some kind of way, like that inspires me a lot. But I do see what you mean where like where you feel like it's not the idea. It's never for, for I mean, I can't. Like, like it's I more can't about the production. Like, it's the production. Because, like, it's like, like, how well do I want to produce? Like, do, can I market it properly? I'll, I, have, I'll have a million ideas, and I'll be working on a million things, but what I actually put out, it might be completely different. Like, with me and, you know, like, working on the penetration company for years and the content for it, it's like, the content that I wrote three years ago is not the same content that I want to put out now. It and changes. The problem that I run into is that a lot of times I hold on for my shit to my shit for so long that I don't even like it anymore. And like as time, yeah, and as time goes on, it's kind of like I don't really want to put this out. I forget his name, but I think I sent y'all the link to the guy that did his TED talk in regards to like um, original thinkers, mm-hmm. like people that have actual original ideas and concepts. Um, you're fast to start, but slow to finish. So like the idea comes fast because it's like but I gotta get it out. The production is kind of like slow because then and then like once you've Hit a level of like, oh, I want to produce this. Now, so much has changed about like what you actually want to produce. So like, oh, I don't like that idea. So I'm gonna tweak it this Because it's like way, in our way. heads, the yeah. idea has advanced. It's so advanced. like now yeah. it's like I have and what I, I wrote three years ago. It's and not do I have the do I have the sources to create what I actually have in my mind? How I want it done. Yeah, exactly. how I want it done. So exactly. For me, it's like it's it's more of a personal thing. Like I don't think I ever hit I a can drought. Create- Every day. In my Every head. day is a new idea. It's a new concept. Down. It's a new, like, visual. But, like, do but I have... But as far as shooting shit, yeah, like, and wanting different. to put it out, it's, like, it's, it's way it's different. It's limited. It's way different. It's Especially, limited. like... Cute is going to keep pouring, like, this is legit. got liquor in it. Because I was sick. Especially with, like, the one. shit... I mean, I'm high. Tidy. It's, especially with, like, the shit that I want to do. It's, like... You have you have, you have standards. It's, it's so much like it's and and then with me it's like I'm never in a rush to do anything or put anything out. For me now it's all about the money. I don't give a fuck about you know creating for the penetration company right now. I got content like that's not what I'm worried about. And when I ask for memoirs, people will send me memoirs. So you know there'll always be content, but now it's like as time is moving on, it's about the visuals. Like, you know, people, like you said, you don't even like to read. A lot of creators nowadays don't really like to read. They like to watch. They like to look. So mm-hmm. it's about the visuals. Mm-hmm. And y'all know me. Like, I'm all about shit. I'd rather, like, wait it out two years. Be tough. I'd rather, like, wait it out two years to build up, like, Nigga, my money. Huh? Some animated memoir would be tough. Yeah, but that costs money. I'm like, not, I was just saying. I just thought, right. I don't know if you thought about it. Like, I'll, I'll wait it out two years to save up all my money to buy camera equipment just so that I can have everything in-house. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, you know, like, y'all, y'all more willing to, like, work with other people just to get it moving quicker. Mm-hmm. See, and, and that's cool, too. And then I think it, it's, it's a, it's a but, matter of your level of comfort and your level of, like, in, in and how it works for you. And like, for you. Yeah. And your experience. <coughs> Because again, like you know, I've done this shit like quite a few times before, and it's every time like I went against my better judgment. It's just like nothing ever was pretty. No, it's, it's, that's that's real talk. Like I mean, I've been in situations where like I've had one idea, one idea one way, and it turns out a different way, and like it changed your complete like perspective on how to produce that type of project again. Like all that stuff plays a part. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I, I personally just feel like ultimately like producing stuff and droughts and all that stuff comes down to a level of like. Ability, money, time. You know, For me, it's money. Yeah, it's, it's ability. It comes money would fix a lot of my fucking problems right now. Facts. Like, I would start a production company, like, get all my camera equipment and just hire people to, like, work my shit and do it how I need it done. Shout out to me. He said, do you know this feeling? Being irritated because you got to come. No, me. It's like, no. But I want to be. Yeah. Like, I can't wait for the night. I'm irritated because I got so much fucking money to count. <laughs> Lastly, so, like, on that note, looking forward to the new year. Like I said, it's technically New Year's Eve. Mm. 
Oh, uh, yo, how y'all feel? This new chapter of, of life, whatever. Y'all excited? Y'all feeling good? I mean, anxious? I don't whatever? Indifferent? Indifferent? I mean, I don't want to be the person saying new year, new me. Also, take a shot real quick. Penny. Penny gonna hit the last shot. You got one fucking job. I'm, I'm, I'm personally on the level right now where I'm just accepting what, what comes my way. You know what I mean? Like, whether it's an invitation, whether it's a business deal, right. taking a shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, that was strong. I ain't drink on it. Whatever it is, I'm just willing to push for I don't have nothing to chase it with. Champagne, you don't have champagne? I don't have any more. I should have brought two bottles. But I'm I'm New Year is not new me. I think new me already started in 2018. So I think that like new me is just evolving in the new year. Like I'm gonna be willing to one thing I learned really, really big this year was to put myself first. And I know that sounds like really like like minute to a lot of people. But, like, for a really, really long time, I would never put myself first. It would be, like, family, friends, like, you know, like, those issues, those dramas, and, like, trying to be the person to hold it together. Now, it's really been on, like, my time. Like, does it work for me? Does the time work for me? Does the schedule work for me? Like, it's me. Like, I put myself, like, in the forefront, and then everything else kind of, like, falls into place. Like, if it works for me, then I'll figure out if it works for Penny or if it works for Q. You know what I mean? Like... Does it work for me? For versus like, oh, this is the time that works for Q. I'm the complete Let me fix it and make it work for me. If it don't work for me, then it's just... And, that, and I'm getting to that. You know what I mean? Like, before I wasn't at that level. Before it was, like, more so, like, me trying to please people that were in my immediate circles. Like, my family and friends. Like, oh, like, Tuesday works for Penny. Let me cancel X, Y, and Z because it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like, now it's like, oh, Tuesday don't work for me. It just don't work for me. Like, okay, well, we can figure out the day or we can just chalk it all together. You know what I mean? Like, and that's where I'm getting to. And, like, for me to get to that I level. Me and Q share those sentiments. Where I mean, like, that's cool. But, like, I've got to the level where, like, for me, it's, it's like. I'm good at being balanced. I've always on a balanced. larger scale, though. Like, I feel like to an extent, obviously. But, like, on a larger scale, like, I've now, like, put myself first on a larger scale. Shout out to your growth. It's healthy. Yeah. You. I think that's. How would you pay good. sum it up? Anything? Uh... Um, I think. I mean, I don't want to do the cliche New Year, New Me shit because I feel like when people say that, that, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Like, and I actually want shit to happen. I want to just get so much. Like, this year, I'm not, 2019, I'm not worried about nothing creative. Like, I just want some fucking money. Like, that's it. Like, I want to make money. I'm trying to, I don't, I don't, I ain't telling nobody. Like, <laughs> period. Want to, I definitely Run want the Run the check, money. period. I definitely want the money. And um, just like, Trusting my intuition a lot more mm. because, like now, I just be making decisions. If it don't feel right, if I'm it don't over feel it, right, that's it. That's like, it. I will cut you off. If the like check that. not like, right, if the vibe not right, if I'm over it, it's just like I'm booking it. my flight back home immediately. That <laughs> is it. Like, I'm leaving tonight. Actually. If if my inner judgment is telling me like it's time to let this shit go it or does. it's time to chalk it, that's it. Like I don't need no proof in the real world. Yeah. I don't need none of that shit. That's it's it. It's trusting your gut. Every time I like when it gets my intuition, it like always bit me in the ass. So, it's like, trusting your year, gut. Your gut knows you. It knows what's gonna work out for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like you're, even if it don't make sense in a big picture, it makes sense for you. That's what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? Like and that's your gut. I feel like but even then it's just like the whole idea of making sense of something and like using logic i feel like a lot of times we ra- try to rationalize our Everything. intuition and intuition is not supposed it's not to be rational. rational it's not, meant to be made it's not rational like your thoughts and your logic is your thoughts and your logic and it's completely based your on intuition. your out uh, your outcome not on the outcome of the entire situation it's based and on your intuition is what you feel like it's not just like an yeah. emotion it's not it's not to be rationalized. And I feel like a lot of times we try to talk ourselves out of a situation that we knew we shouldn't have been in in the first place. Or in a situation that, you know, we should have gotten involved in. Right. But we didn't. Like being a side nigga or a side chick. Oh, all right. That's, that's a whole other episode. Wait, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, did you guys enjoy yourself on this episode? This conversation. <laughs> Right. Ty- Tyreek was bitching like, yo, that's oh, like a shit. lot of time. I don't, I don't want to talk for like an hour. 
Tyree got spicy at the yeah, end. Yeah, he, 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 he been holding that shit in for a minute. I want y'all to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so happy New Year to everybody. Happy, Listen, New, happy Year. New Year to y'all. We're going to have a good fucking time tonight, technically, once again. Whatever. No baby dance with your mother at the function. Oh, okay. Yeah, once again. Shout out to the roof. Shout out to the pot on the roof. Shout out to the peer pressure tonight. Yeah, I ain't to hearing. The house. Shout out to the aphrodisiac um, pants. I ain't hearing none of this not Drake shit tonight. Because I kind of oh. feel like you don't give her enough. I like, was oh. thinking about that earlier. She be the most entertaining guest after me on the show. Oh. I love Mama. Oh. Like why you don't love her as much? And as I think you you're the only you? person that don't see that. No, Q love her. Q just don't want her part of his shine. And I, I get it, I, but I get listen, because at the live show she was shining. He <laughs> yep. was laughing at it, like, and he was the one on the stage. Oh. And it was all good, so I think that I'm he just can't handle Mama, you know, her fame. You know. Right on, keep alive. Even, <laughs> we are live. Talk about it. We are plug. Cut this shit the fuck off. Oh, oh. So, you know, Mama, Nobody can outshine Q in his toxic ways. I'm done. You ain't